in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. All right, welcome everybody to this week's edition of the Top 10 Show. I am John Roca. I am Matt Nost. All right, and we are here um, after, what, a week hiatus? Wait, no, I don't know what I'm saying. We haven't seen each other in a week is what I'm trying to say. We have not seen each other in a week. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the show must go on. We are tackling an interesting new list this week. Um, yeah, thanks to uh, Patreon, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Matthew Hasso. Hasso. He's like a- jalapeno. <laughs> Matthew Hasso. I always think of Scarface. He's a Hasso, Frank. He's a Hasso. Never, never, what, get high on your own supply? Is that what he says? <laughs> yeah. Scarface, he tells me. It's an old axiom of the drug trade. Everybody knows that now. <laughs> I wonder if someone, I'm sure, in all the years of all drug dealers, somebody had to have said that before it became like the movies and whatnot. Right. It had to exist. I just don't know how prevalent it would have been where now every drug dealer knows that axiom yeah. at least they should yeah it's a number one rule i guess it's the only rule that i know of like specifically you don't get high on your own supply yeah you gotta you gotta be careful do you know another rule i mean outside of the general you know what i mean well, i gotta get protect caught. my area don't get caught i mean that seems to be number one but you're gonna get caught you think so yes how many drug dealers make it out in the end i guess you're right i mean pablo got caught the guy from blow got caught the movie that johnny depp was in yeah yeah. Eventually, it doesn't matter how big or small. As long as you do it long enough, you're just raising your odds of getting, <laughs> you know, picked off. You're just like it's. It's just the yeah. more you do it, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, the longer it takes, the worse it's going to be too, because it yeah. means you've been evading and you've gotten bigger yeah. and whatever else. And these guys get pissed off that you're like evading the law. You keep evading those, so the cops get more and more upset. They get more and more adamant to catch you, don't you think? Well, according to the movies, and well, it just becomes the fixation of one or two guys. They yeah. just won't let this case go. <laughs> That's right, That's bad right. boys. Running scared, you name it. Anybody cop movie? Uh, oh, fucking <laughs> Miami Vice, which I turned oh. off. What show was that for? I don't even remember at this point. I'm which, so tired. Miami Vice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you watched it, and I, I got through halfway through, and I was like, I can't. God, I don't remember. It was cartels. Yeah, yeah cartels. It was the there cartel. you go. Yeah, I imagine it was the top ten cartel. It had films. to be. It had yeah, to be. Yeah. That's how tired I am. I couldn't remember. What is that? Like four <laughs> shows ago? I'm just like I don't know. That seems like two years ago. I know you've been uh, you've been really busy this week. You've been uh, it dead. seems like yeah I'm dead. Yeah, you are. Yeah, okay. And it doesn't end. I, I still got to work on it tonight. Yeah, because yeah. I remember last week when we were about you were about to start this whole thing, and you were like, Hoo-hoo. it ends this it ends this week, the end of this okay. week. All right. So hopefully by the time I see you next, yes, we're I'm I'm good to go and it's smooth sailing from there. You'll be fresh as a spring daisy. Well, no, I'll be tired because it will have ended the day before. Oh, I see. And I'm gonna. And sleep. you don't want to talk about it. It's it's. Uh, it's okay if you don't want to talk about it. Well, I mean, I, I'll talk about it off the air, but it's it's oh, nothing okay. that anybody of listening to this is of interest. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. it has no tie in. It's just like it'd be it'd be dull as fuck as to what what well, it is. I think you're underestimating the audience. The audience love you loves to hear your life. <laughs> <laughs> they hear enough about my crazy fucking life. They like hearing your more settled. Oh, I, I think it's life. the Sorry. two same caller. Yeah, uh, for whatever reason. Here, I'm turning some sound down on my on my uh, computer so yeah. I don't get those calls again. Got a anyway. phone call right before. Yeah. You're a popular guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's my mom. Yeah, I'm real popular. It's, it doesn't matter. Why haven't you called? I'm sorry, mom. I'm busy. I'm, busy I'm the one. I'm the one kid that doesn't. I don't call like ever. Really? I just don't like the phone. That's all. That, that was my like excuse phone. when I was younger, and now mm-hmm. that I'm older, I'm like, I, why, why do I care? You know what I mean? What about your parents? No, 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 no. Why do I care so much about talking on the phone? Oh, yeah, Like, yeah, yeah. really? This is your hang-up, and you haven't spoken to your parents like as much as you should have? Now that I'm older, and right. I realize how much I've wasted, how much time. Yeah. Uh, being on the phone. Not being on the phone. Talking to them, because we've always lived oh. a few thousand miles apart. Gotcha. Well, not always, but for a long time. <laughs> uh, and I just don't. I just don't. Once yeah. I get into the rhythm of a conversation, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm it's just, just starting. A, it's just like, a, oh, yeah, now i got to visualize you in my head and have a conversation. And <laughs> Look how deep you go. Well, just trying to picture and, and, sure. and move along. It has more resonance that way. Oh, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. 
Ooh, uh, it affects you more. Permeates the soul. <laughs> it's like the gym. You're like, fuck. Once you get in there, you're great. It's just getting there. That's the problem. <laughs> Uh, I, I always, hope nobody in my family listens to this one. If that's <laughs> that, that's the best analogy that you can find up, and it rings true, oh, that hurts. I always hate. I always hate that man because I, when I used to go to the CrossFit all the time, it was right. It's literally right across the street. Like Matt could look out my window right now and see my CrossFit gym, and it was. I would still have to talk myself into it. Of course. And, and then when I got in there, I was happy as hell. Like I was like, why did I even hesitate? This is so much fun. But like walking across the fucking street, just walking across the fucking street, even well, then I have to motivate myself to do that. The worst is because you live there. It's not even the day you decide to go. It's the other days you don't. You drive past. Yes. You have shame. You're like, yes. oh, it's right there. It's right there. I mean, I should, I should go. <laughs> That's the worst. I, yeah. I couldn't. I could never join a gym that is that close. It's just too much. Never guilt. a million years. <laughs> it's it is. It's too close. Yeah, I like good. I like a few minute drive to get there and kind of like gear up to right. And then, boom, I'm ready to go. Think about it and all that jazz. Yeah. Well, see, I've moved the gym in here now. I have my weights and my spin bike right behind me. So I do what I can there. But even that's like, every time I walk by it, I have Did to... you crack the heat in here to like 120 degrees? You don't get your severe sweat on Oh, no. Quite the opposite, man. I try Is to it? open all the windows and the door so I can breathe without... Because, I mean, it's so intense, the spinning shit. It's, it's not just riding an exercise bike. It's that spin stuff where you're going up and down and you're doing hills and you're turning the resistance on in the bike, which makes it even more intense. And so... Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm dripping with sweat by the time I'm done. So it's like I have to open the doors and the windows just to have a shot at, like, being able to breathe in the whole situation. <laughs> maybe if I was one of these intense fuckers that liked that kind of shit, maybe I would do that. But then then my fucking place would smell like a sweat box, and who the hell would want to come visit? I yeah, couldn't no, I would. Well, thankfully, though, it, you know, it'd just be the, this small little area here because all the hard surfaces and stuff, yeah. it wouldn't just stick like right. it was carpet or something. One thing I had to learn was finding a mat. Like, you have to do a mat underneath the exercise bike because you're sweat. I had no idea. Like, the sweat. Oh, I figured for the vibration, just so you're not pissing off neighbors. Oh, no. Well, I'm on the ground floor. It's more a matter of the... True. The the, the sweat, apparently, like, can... The predominant amount of sweat will eventually erode the wood on the floor. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. So, and I have to put a mat up. It's it's terrible things you have to do. I I used to live at this place in uh, Silver Lake. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a. It was a great apartment. I loved it. Uh, great price and good location. You know what oh. I mean? Easy access to uh, 101. Boom, shoot right over. But I was up on this hilltop, so I was right. away from all the nonsense. Right. And it was it was awesome. But there was one other dude that was home a lot during the day, like I was. I was gone at nights. Yeah. You know, performing and whatnot. So he'd see me, and then a couple of times, like uh, once he was like, "Oh, I got something, you know, for you, whatever." And I went down to his mm-hmm. apartment, which is. One floor down and like a couple underneath me. I was on the top floor. Yeah. And I walk in and he had a heavy bag there and his, we had carpets. His place reeked like sweat. <sighs> it was so gross. Oh man. Like he always had like a bit of a BO, but I was like, I could just be one of those guys. And then his yeah. world is that. And I was like, oh my, the, he must think he smells like a daisy compared to his room. Some people just don't care. I still think it's mind blowing to me. Some people just don't care. Like I went to see a movie the other day. I went to see Rampage in 3D over at the Real D Studios. Like the uh, my friend Jennifer invited me to come, and I took my boy Shannon. We went and watched it. And uh, this guy next to me, through the last hour of the film, was either picking his nose and flicking it on the ground, or biting his nails, <laughs> and then wiping it off his shirt, like the nail degree nail debris off yeah. his shirt. This is a guy I know. This is a guy in our industry. And I could not fucking believe he was doing that through the last hour of the movie. It drove me insane. So much so to the point that I had to lift the, the collar of my vest up so I could block my... Was he sitting in the seat next to you? Yes. Oh, my so God. So I could block my right eye from seeing him in my periphery doing the shit he was doing. Because it was really fucking up my enjoyment of the movie for those 20 minutes Did that, you, before uh... I covered my, uh, my right side up. You didn't, you didn't fucking uh, caddyshack it and turn to the person next to you and be like, 20 bucks says he eats the next one. <laughs> no. Anybody else seen this? Look at this. Look at this. Right to my right. Right here. Right to the I should have done it. I should have done that. I would have because I, I can't imagine Rampage is good. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Yeah. It was a fun. It's not a great movie, but it was fun. That's all I'll say. Um, but I, you and I are different. That's what you would do. I, it, was uh, every, it would drive me nuts. I wouldn't say shit. Oh, really? I'd okay. do the same thing. It was everything in my power not to smack him on the shoulder. I was really close to smacking him going, the fuck is wrong with you? This is not your living room. 
This is like this. We've been invited to this theater to watch this movie. This is not for you to throw your fucking paraphernalia off your body onto it's the ground. It's not even paraphernalia. It, 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 the, debris is debris. the greatest word. Yes, debris. Because it's just, it's wreckage from your own body and you're just throwing it out. I had a roommate once. It was like, it's the same Human thing like debris. that where like, are you a fucking animal? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Social decorum. Yeah, social decorum. I had a roommate that went from his place to dorms to uh, frat and then his senior year he lived with us because he was friends with a bunch of, right. you know, my friends. Yeah. He's a nice guy. But he had never like lived in a place that it was his own, so he would pick his nose and just wipe it on the wall. What? Because freshman year and then into the the fucking you know fraternity, somebody else was always cleaning it and whatnot. Oh so he'd just do that, and apparently his mom did it at home, and he just what? He absentmindedly once, and I was like, "Don't wipe your goddamn <laughs> booger on the wall." And he's like, "Oh shit, I didn't even think." And there's like two others up there. I'd never oh. seen him do it before, and I was like. Oh, man. <laughs> you get on your knees. You scrub that bucket. Yeah, wall. scrub it down and don't ever fucking do that again, man. That is disgusting. And he just didn't think anything of it. It's like, madness to me. Yeah, dude. that was the craziest. I don't have anything else that's that. Yeah. Well, I had a friend once come over and pick the dead skin off the bottom of his feet. Oh. Yeah, no. Worst. And then he was trying to nonchalantly put it behind my couch. Oh. And I was sitting like they were staggered <laughs> seats and I had a lazy boy and we were watching a movie and I was in my lazy boy and I look over at one point and I see him doing it. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I go over there and look and there's like four or five large skin oh. flakes. Yeah. Oh, get that, out. Exactly. Actually, our friendship ended like a month later. Oh, guys, well, it should. He did two other things in one night and I was like, never, no, <laughs> we're done. They were way worse than that. That was Holy nothing. Shit, way worse. That was precursor. I caught him stealing twice and he destroyed... Uh, all my towels. Oh, shit. All my bath towels. Oh, what an ass. And I was 23 broke. And I was like, dude, that's like seven towels gone. That's like, that's a lot of money, 23, when you're broke. Yes. Yeah. And you tried to steal from my broke ass twice. Technically, uh, not once and uh, actually once. Dudes are the, dudes are assholes, Yeah, man. I left out a bunch of money for the laundry, uh, yeah. like, you know, quarters. Right. And he needed a bus fare. So he took like 350 in all my quarters. And I was like, <laughs> you, you cocksucker. <laughs> I need to do clothes today. It was like a gut punch. It's like yeah. it's three fifty, whatever. But I yeah. don't have quarters. Now I got to go get fucking quarters. And I, oh, dudes are assholes, man. Yeah, we went to we really just. I don't know how. Like I think our mothers raise us well. We just don't give a fuck. That's what I think happens sometimes, man. Some dudes just don't. Some dudes just don't. It's mind blowing to me, man. Yeah, have some have some public decorum, like you said. That's it, public decorum. That's what I almost. Sm- that's why I smacked them. I almost smacked them. Was like, yeah, you know, you're in a fucking pu- you're in the fucking yeah, exactly. public, dude. Have some, there's a societal contract that we're all we all uh, you know uh, indirectly sign, and we well, say we're not going to do disgusting things in front of each other. The problem is somebody's behavior like that really blurs the lines between us and gorilla. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see our former jungle behavior where you just pick whatever you wanted to and. Just be an animal. <laughs> We're elevated above that, man. So yeah, yeah. stop doing that. <laughs> come come and join the rest of the human race. Oh, can you imagine if it was a woman you saw do that? Oh. That'd be even crazier. Yeah, I always wonder about this. Like, whether uh, if women are gr- as gross as men, but in different ways. So I never know. Like, I hear stories sometimes from other female friends of mine that, like, make me almost throw up. But, like, so I wonder if they're just as bad. You know, I think it all depends on... The kind of person you are. I think it's irrelevant of gender. <laughs> it's just a matter about the kind of person you are. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. So off of that topic, um, this week we decided we were going to count down the top ten sword and sandal uh, movies based on what Matthew Hasso uh, sent us. Uh, and thanks, Matthew, for being a great patron. Like you've been waiting patiently while we've yeah. uh, gotten to you and gotten to the, the your topic, and so and to everyone who's donated, like the, that level where you can pick a topic. Thank you so much for donating every month, and then you know we're yeah. we're, we're going to make more of a concerted effort, even though we, it's a we busy have it summer built into the schedule at least mm-hmm. once a month. Yep, uh, we're going to try and maintain that going forward. Like you know, you guys are showing us a tremendous amount of support. We want to reward you. You know, as quickly as you can, yeah. or as we can, but we also need to like, oh, we got this guest and they'd be perfect. Let's right. see if we can line that up. Right. We need flexibility within that. If we come up with a good topic we know you guys will like. So it's just working out, trying to find that balance. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you uh, to Matthew because he's been off. He also hits us up on Facebook yeah, and Twitter does. and he's, he's great. you know, he, it's everywhere. He's a good guy. There's yeah. no way you don't hate at that level and not. You know what I mean? You're, <laughs> you're a part of the show. Exactly. At that point. Yeah, we know who you are. Uh, so this so anyway so um, do you want to tell them how the show works? 
Yeah. Uh, once I or John or Matthew sets a topic where you go our separate ways and create individual top 10, let's show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top 10 list, we create the shows between the two of us. Boom. Um, this was a fun list and an interesting list. And it may have some cheats, but I don't know. It all depends on perception and uh, what have you. So. Okay. I'm glad you said that up top. Yep. Sword and sandal. Sort of say I, I I tried to as best I could keep it to like the peblum esque. Yes, understood. Uh, yeah, that to me is like when you're talking sword and sandal because then you could cheat and you could add in a couple other things if you wanted to if you got outside of that. Maybe. Which if you did, that's fine. Okay. Because I also I had fun with my list because I got a huge blind spot of those fifties and sixties. Oh shit! I've seen a couple, nice. but I haven't seen because it, it just. The few bad ones I've seen, right. it's just like, oh my god, and they're all kind of like this. Yes. No, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. It's not your game. Uh, uh-uh, not at all. <laughs> but there's a few that I have seen that where I did thoroughly enjoy. But I, I like, I've never seen Cleopatra. I'm yeah, not sitting down I. five yeah. hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, that's yeah. called go fuck yourself. Well, to me also, if sword and sandal means there has to be an, like a sword and sandal situation, like it can't just be like sandals and then no swords. So for me, that's kind of how I approach it. That's how I okay. built my list. And okay. whatever you do with your list, of course, that's what that's the uniqueness of the show is that you know we each of our us decide our definition of it and then come to yeah. the list. So yeah, well, yeah, I have a f- more fluid definition just because. <laughs> ah, yes, I do because I just have that huge blind spot of like I haven't seen that. I know I should see that. Right. I know I should see, see that. I've been so busy, just like I can't watch anything between now and then. So I yeah. got to go with what I got. Understood. I usually try and catch like one or two in between, like. Coming up on a show. Yeah. To rewatch something or maybe watch something I haven't seen. Definitely. Anyway. All right. Number 10. Yes. Uh, Clash of the Titans. Oh, that's my number nine. Yes. Uh, b- b- the, b- 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 the original. Remake. The remake. The remake. Oh. Uh, just because, look. Oh, proceed. The, f- the first one, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, we will. I've only seen once. Oh, okay. I've seen certain sections in repeat and other things. We can talk about it when we get to it. Sure. On that one, I, I like it. I had, I have wow. no other explanation. I walked out. I saw Wrath in the theater because I saw I saw this in the theater, and I was really? like, you know what? I don't care that other people didn't enjoy it. I did. Like there are certain points. Yes, you could cut. Sure. And the exposition at times is clunky. Nowhere near as bad as Wrath. Wrath is brutal. <laughs> Wrath is the worst, dude. Every scene they show up in, here we are. In and, and then they give the full exposition of where this place is and what it means to all the characters, and they do it to every practical new just like set piece. And you're like, this is ridiculous. It is terrible. Just you're <laughs> filling in so much story with this horse shit. But in this one, you know what? I, I was in a Sam Worthington. I liked him in Avatar. All right. Let, yeah. Let's see what else this guy can do. Yeah. And uh, overall, like, it fails at certain parts, but it succeeds in others. I yeah. liked him a lot. Uh, the duel at the end with the Kraken is, uh, I want it to be better. Yep. It was still good, but yeah. I wanted it to be, like, next level. That's where I think it would jump that movie up even a little bit higher for me. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but I like, I, I just liked all the cataclysm and the big set pieces they did, and I okay. just found it a shitload of fun. All right. That's all I'm saying. Fair. I, saying. I didn't like the I saw it in 3D. Okay. And it was not it, it was like rendered it was not rendered for 3D. So it was really crappy 3D oh. because they didn't convert it correctly or yeah. like it wasn't shot in 3D so then it was it looked terrible. Plus the story just seemed like so it, just laborious, man, and unnecessarily so. Yeah. And then and then you get this whole thing with the uh with uh, Liam Neeson and uh what's his and Ray Fiennes. Yeah, Zeus all of that. And uh, uh, uh Yeah, Poseidon, was it Poseidon? No, 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 no. Oh. He, uh, uh Hades. Hades, right. God of the Zeus underworld. And Hades, that's right. You get the whole thing, and they're all—they're both just eating the fuck out of that. They're chomping the fuck out of that yeah, scenery, Yeah, but at the same man. time, like it's—it's a, it's a, they're Greek gods. Yeah. So you got to let them like <laughs> the 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 faults you find in it. Yeah. Where it was plotting and boring. Yeah. Like I'll give you, but the, but you ever read the Iliad? You know what I mean? There are oh, well, chunks where it's just like if they're trying to do a yeah. visual representation of that, like that's kind of akin to. The normal pace of a Greek story. Yeah, yeah. At least the few that I've read. It's not like I've gone through and tried to discover Homer's missing you know, <laughs> stories. Which I think we only have one, maybe two of his volumes, and they're supposed to be numerous ones. Yeah, of course they were. lost to time. Yeah. A li- who knows what we could have discovered there. Yeah. We'll show up at a yard sale. Yeah, we'll who show knows? up at a yard sale. Who knows? The library in uh, Baghdad was supposed to be the most oh, amazing right. of all time. Right. And it got burned down. I'm sure there was a library in Alexandria. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Uh, they got burned down. Anyway, right. which is number lost, nine? We lost all that. Time. We did. We lost. <laughs> a part of me just died inside. It really did. Lost to history. It sucks <laughs> thinking about that. Like, what could have been? What did? What did we know earlier? Mm-hmm. It, it sparks my mind. Number nine, Conan the Barbarian. 
Oh, that is a punt. Is it a punt? Oh, yeah. That, to me, was kind of a cheat. That, I, I, he, there is a, he is wearing sandals. Yes. And he has a sword. He just doesn't. That's why it's a fluid dynamic. I Once know. again. To me, that's a, that counts. Uh, number eight, 300. Also a punt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number 10, then, is Troy. Punt. Oh. <laughs> Wow, this is just a punt fest right <laughs> off the top. Just boom, it. boom. I mean, we're getting to the same movies. All I right. love it. Cool. All right, what do you got? It? Okay, uh, nine is your rap. Nine, nine, nine is my Clash of the Titans, or the original Clash, one yeah. with, with Harry Hamlin and the great Sir Lawrence Olivier and the uh, uh, Steel Owl, or the Metal Owl, whatever you want to say. I, I love the... Um, I, I just love this film for the camp of it and the shtick of it back in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just did a news piece yesterday on Cloud and Movie talk about Last Starfighter being rebooted by Gary Witter, the guy who wrote Rogue One. It's very interesting that they're going to redo The Last Starfighter. And so if they're going to reboot you, it or sequel or whatever, you know, whatever they're going to do. What? Have you seen Last Starfighter in the last, like, five years? Yes. Okay. What, I, I watched it, like, two years ago, and I couldn't believe. I, the parts that I, st- I remember loving as a kid, I right. still loved. Okay. But it drags for me now. I'm just like, okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Move this along. Did you ever see Enemy Mine? Did you ever see that? Yeah. That one still holds up. Does it? Yes. I saw that like five times as a kid. Yeah, Six man. Times. It was on repeat like uh, the first time I was exposed to like Showtime. Yeah. And then suddenly Enemy Mine. <laughs> and I saw that a lot. Yeah. Okay. I didn't like it the first like two times I saw it because I was so young. Right. Uh, but then I saw it like a third time. I was like, okay. And then the fourth, yeah. and the, by the fifth, sixth, whoever knows. Yeah. Like I really enjoy, it, especially the the way it shifts. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, I appreciated it more. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. So anyway, I just enjoy that film for so much for what it does, and I, I and everyone seems to be invested in the right cheesy way. I think coming on the heels okay. of what happened with. Uh, uh, 78 Superman where you have Brando and all those like old English actors up there uh, as the uh, elder statesman of Krypton I, I never thought of it like that yeah okay. if I connect, it seemed I, like that vibe worked into Clash of Titans so I was cool with it and Harry Hamlin at the time you know was kind of a big deal was kind of becoming a, he went on to be the lead in LA Law for a while on a TV series so he was enjoyable to watch and everything that happened and I thought the special especially the Medusa special effects were still very reminiscent of the Harry Housen stuff well it is Harry Housen yeah I guess it is Harry Housen so, so there's a, a, a lot Love for that that I still enjoy and still have a special place. Sure, and I will yeah, occasionally yeah, yeah. catch it on Sci-Fi or wherever when it's showing on some. Those are the parts that channel. I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that movie, mm-hmm. um, I remember for whatever reason. So I know the 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 battle scene with the Kraken. Yeah, but we also had uh, a toy that only came into the bath with us, and when I was like really young. Oh, okay. One of those, and it was the Kraken. It had like four <laughs> or six arms or something. It was four arms. Yeah, and it just. It was my brother's, and I was like, oh, and that's to that. But I never, I don't, you know, I haven't seen the full movie in so oh, long. I wow, remember the yeah, owl. And the that's, Pegasus. Don't forget the yeah, Pegasus. Pegasus. That's right. That was well, that's part there. of the fight with the, the Kraken. That's right. It was enjoyable as hell. All right, so that was my number, my number nine. My number eight is uh, an old classic, Jason and the Argonauts. That's my number seven. What? Yeah. Nice. So that's the one blind, the one that got through your blind spot, Jason and the Argonauts. Because that's not a, that's a, like a 70s, 60s film, something like that. But it's good. Yeah, it is good. And it I think good. it's also uh, like shortened to the point. Yep, it tells a much quicker story. Mm-hmm. Plus, there's more Harryhausen. Where yes, it's the early stuff, and it still looks pretty good. Yeah, the Colossus, whatever the yeah. uh, is it the Cyclops? No, yeah, oh, no, the big bronze statue. Oh yeah, is it Sopless Solus? Sol- it's something mm-hmm. or Polaris? Pol- I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, when they fight him. Yes. Although the stupidity of his Achilles heel, which is almost his Achilles heel, but it's not quite. <laughs> it's like, I, this doesn't make sense, but okay, I, you know, I, I don't know Greek you give it uh, some, history. You give it some patience. But it looked like some Scooby-Doo monster that you go up eventually, and you just got to disconnect the back ankle, and then suddenly all his fluid leaks out <laughs> and, just, burr, burr, and falls over. We're good to go. We can make it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, within Oregon, it's like, I think the lead is a bit... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah a bit much wooden uh, or overdone it, yeah exactly yes. just like so living in the moment and yet at the same time like it just looks like bad stage acting yeah 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 in yeah. the middle of a movie set <laughs> yeah, he's confident at least That's, actually he's projecting confidence he is he I doesn't think. look confident no 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 Phalaris is I think is that the when you're thinking of Phalaris is that the name of it the statue that comes alive yeah the god 
the other god. I remember that was so great. And then when they were throwing things down at the at the ship and everything like that, it was just intense little film. And I was surprised, like when I was a kid, watched it. I was just I was just blown away by the film. So whenever mm -hmm. whenever it randomly comes on one of these, like one of the pay channels, I'm just like super excited to watch like twenty or thirty minutes of it and just remember enjoying it as a kid because you just you just marvel at what they're able to do with that technology at that time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. it's because they had so many cheesy ones like Million Years BC, all those other ones that are around that time that were not that good. And you and this one I really enjoyed. I think the my favorite effect is when they do their boat in the the mountains that are crumbling, oh, yeah. and Poseidon comes up, and yeah. eventually they, I think they have like a two shot with them, or maybe a, a tracking shot or something where you can see Poseidon in the background yes. still holding up, and the ship is going past, and mm -hmm. you're like, that's still really impressive. Yeah, it um, works. Because at other points, it's like, okay, this is a matte painting, like into a movie we're going to get into later. Right. Like they still built a hell of a set, but they filled in a lot of the detail in the yeah. backgrounds. Like they didn't have, <laughs> nobody had the budget for this shit. That's right. Especially uh, for a film like this. Yeah. They weren't yeah, going to yeah. give the budget to this. This tiny little bit. I mean, it, you know, it, they also bring in what? They've got Achilles. Yeah. And uh, it's a double cross, triple cross type of, <laughs> type of little shenanigans going on. Yep. It's not bad. No, no, it's an enjoyable film. It is. And I wish they could have done more that were... I think there was a couple of other ones that came out that were sequels, but they didn't come anywhere close to being as, as interesting and fun as this one not. was, unfortunately. Yeah. I guess you just kind of catch lightning in a bottle sometimes. You can't quite go back to it. I didn't know there were that many Hercules movies. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So many. So, I mean, yeah. two... I was like, wow, really? The demand was this high? Yeah. Or it just it was so cheap to make and they could eventually find a distributor for it? I have no idea. Well, I don't think it's any different now. Like our demand for the horror stuff. They, they, they just announced yesterday they're going to do another another Jigsaw movie. That's like 10. But it's so cheap 10. to do now. That's what I mean. I think these were cheap too because they weren't like name actors. Still though, you things. had to you know, commit it to film and then duplicate yeah. the film and send that across, you know, these big fire hazards sending it across the country <laughs> to various true. film, you know, theaters. That's a good point. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know how you do it. It's just like, wow. <laughs> gotta, if there's a demand, you got to satisfy yeah, the demand. There's exactly. Gotta be a product, if there's a buck right? to be made, yep. somebody will do it. <laughs> All right, that was your number what? That was my seven. Okay. And that was your eight, so my six is your punt, or our, our punt okay. earlier, Troy. Okay, great. Um... You know, it's just hyper stylized grease. Yeah, but I don't know. That Anachronistic I've... grease to a degree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a little bit. This moody fucking Brad Pitt shit that he's doing through the whole movie. You know, um, but yeah. Uh, well, it's got a good cast: him, Eric Bana, Orlando mm -hmm. Bloom, Brian Cox, yep, Brendan Gleeson. Uh, yep. And um, uh, who's the Saffron the... Burrows, Rose who's Byrne. The... Rose Byrne. Yeah. Rose Byrne before she lost all that weight. And then uh, who is the blonde? The German. She's a German. Oh, Diane Kruger. There you go. Yes. She's gone on to have a good career. Yeah. Uh, I'm not always the biggest fan of hers on English speaking stuff, but when she's talking German, she is so naturally good. Same thing with Penelope Cruz. Like, Cruz sometimes in the English stuff, I'm like, eh. And then when she goes into her Spanish, you're just like, wow, okay, this is where you exist. Like, you can see yeah, your mind the works. difference. Yeah. Right. Better in this world because you grew up in it. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, like her I, scenes, like Kruger scenes in Inglorious Bastards are incredible. Like I'm just like, oh, this is great, you know. But some of the stuff in National Treasure, I'm like, oh. Could you act in Spanish? I could not because I'm. I could to a degree, but not like because I grew up here. So yeah, but I've heard you speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can, I can, I can take in as long as someone doesn't speak like rattle off. Yes, I can pretty much process everything you're saying. Yeah. But the problem is, it's like the recall of that. I can only form rudimentary, like, <laughs> I could pick it back up if you dropped me in Mexico for a month. Sure, sure, By the sure. end of it, I would, it, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. I think it would take me two, three days to remember, oh, yeah, that's the word for this. And then I conjugate it like this. Right. The past tense, I would still, I wouldn't even try. I would just, it would sound like bad. Like, instead of I need to, like, whatever, you know, oh, yeah. you put the, the, there's the two past tenses. And yeah. I could never remember. Preterite. Yeah. So I would just. Choose one and be like, I'm choosing that at all times. And they'll understand. <laughs> they'll I'm figure gonna, it out. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and worry about linguistics. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get the words right. Okay, I'm so just surprised. I figured you could as long as... No, I could, I could. It's just um, it's just that my na my first language is English. Yeah. But yes, yeah, Spanish-wise. You know what? I can sing better in Spanish than I can in English. That's what's weird to me. Like, I legitimately can sing, like, on pitch, on note, in Spanish, way better than I can sing in English, which is so strange to me. When I was auditioning for a musical, 
my friend was helping me audition and she's like, well, how would you do it in like, Spanish? Can you sing it in Spanish? And I sang in Spanish. She goes, Jesus Christ, like well, you didn't miss a note. And yet when yeah. you sing in English, you miss a note. And I go, I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is. Does that mean there's an accordion somewhere in this place? <laughs> an accordion? Well, it's, it's polka music. That's what, is, what, what a lot of Latino oh, music is. Well, that's that Mexican stuff. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, what are you talking about? The, the South American stuff is more like pipe flute type stuff. Like uh, in the Indian music is what I'm into. The more like, uh, um, it's I'm more, sure I've heard it, but that doesn't, yeah. I mean, I can't just conjure it in my head just straight off of that. It's more just like the and what they call Andean music from the Andes. It's it's that kind of music, which is. Are more, you talking about more like indigenous culture? Yes, yes. Okay, that's the more the Spanish music that yeah. I enjoy. It's the equivalent of like African world beat. Yeah, I guess you and, could say that. Yeah, absolutely. It just speaks more to for whatever reason. Intrinsically, I just feel more of a connection to that than that than that other stuff. That ponche, 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 ponche. Yeah, I can't do any of that shit. It's polka music. Yeah, I can't do it. It's, it's because the Germans settled there, and then somehow their music. <laughs> Became the cultural just juggernaut. I don't. That's I filled up the other day at AMPM, and one guy was shutting off his car, listening to you know Mexican yeah. polka music in essence. Yeah. And then right after that, a guy drove up uh, right behind him, windows down, blaring a totally different sound uh, song, but still the same song. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Because it all has it all has the same uh, uh, time signature, yep. and it's all I got the you know same structure for the most part. Right. Just like, yeah. Then there'll be an interlude in between. You can hear a fucking accordion. You're like, that's great. That's a hit. And it's got an accordion. <laughs> Shit, there's another accordion hit. It's crazy. Yeah. People love it, though. Oh, no, like, they I do. I get it. If I, you were into it, like, yeah. it's happy and you can still, there's also the somber. Mm hmm. It's uh, great stuff. If you're into it, it's great stuff because there's so much of it that you can enjoy. Um, you know what I'm always blown away by is driving around this town and you'll see a billboard for a Latino like music star yeah, yeah. and I have no idea who they are. Well, of course. No clue. Well, why would you? They well, don't show the, them in the main yeah, channel. Some of them are just like, here is, I, I'm pretty sure this guy's Mexican. He's yeah. just wearing a cowboy hat, like a white hat with a black suit or something. Yeah, sure. It's like, you know, Silvio Esteban. Sure. And you're like, that works. He's big. He's big, <laughs> I guess. I have no idea where. Where is he playing? That's like a 5,000-seater. He's going to sell that out? Really? Yep. Never heard yep. of this guy. No and idea. And sometimes they like, it's like sold out immediately. Yeah. You know? Like, I forget what this guy's name is. Um, he's a, a singer of ballads as Mexican, and his son did the same thing. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's huge. For, I think for Fernan Alexander Fernan Alejandro Fernandez, something like that. He's just big. And then his son came behind him doing almost the same kind of thing, and uh it's really interesting because they sell out like crazy. When they show up here in, in, the, in the States, people yeah. go nuts. People go nuts for them, man. So it's just interesting how many people, like Luis Miguel and these kinds of guys, they come over and they just have a, they have a following that just is unbeatable. So Yeah, they do well. Yeah. And, and regardless course, and you see the billboards because like they're not they're talking they're talking to the other people who the latino people who are driving by in their cars going oh my god i can't wait because they're the ones looking at going to going to edm djs probably most of them going who the fuck is that guy who don't know who the fuck is you I do know, it all the time yeah who the fuck is diplo what kind of name is that you know that kind of shit so um anyway so the film anyway is to me is enjoyable um not as that's why it's number ten is not as enjoyable as I was hoping it would be, but I still enjoy watching it. Okay, some of the parts are a bit, a bit like they don't work for me. But overall, Which section? Um, I think the whole how this whole thing comes about, and then Brad Pitt, just the Brad, the, I love Brad Pitt. He's badass at the beginning with the whole jumping up and stabbing thing in the neck. That was fucking awesome. But then as it goes on, he becomes this like kind of. He becomes like this emo 20-year-old. He is kind of brooding. Like, You're right uh, all the time. And he's always like looking away with tears yeah. in his eyes. Uh, Don't you look at it, though, from the perspective on? of he is the ultimate warrior, like the ultimate assassin, yeah. and he's, he doesn't want to kill anymore. No. And yet he is under the patronage or gives patronage to like whatever else this king because he yeah. has to, Brian Cox. Yeah, Cox. So he's just a hired gun. He's kind of fed up with it. And that's the brooding of like, I'm yep. forced to do this, and I know I'm excellent at it, but I don't want to anymore. And that's Cox what I, is great. Cox is great. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, he is. When, he, when they kill Brendan Gleeson, his scream is fucking awesome. Um, but the, the the fight between Banna and, and uh, Pitt is fantastic, too. It That's is. some great choreography. Yeah, the Orlando Bloom character is the part that yes. kills me in that movie. Oh, such That's a... the failure. Like, I don't buy that this she would have been attracted to a guy like right. this. Like, it doesn't really make sense because she seems to be virtuous unless, I don't know. He's such a the whiny first time, bitch. Yeah, he revealed his true colors, but that doesn't seem likely. Yeah. 
I don't know though. Maybe it's like a semi arranged marriage, and they they've only known each other for. Sh- I have no fucking clue. I got to right. fill in the backstory here. Well, that's the problem I have with the movie is they they cast these people, but then they make them act certain ways. You're like, this does not. It's not congruent. It doesn't connect in yeah. my mind that these things would work out the way they do. True. You know, and the fact that they keep wanting defending this this weak ass child of theirs. Um, when it's so much easier to just sacrifice him and everything is back to normal and we have peace. Yeah. Although, how do you do that to there's your no, child? But there's no virtuousness to him. If there was some virtuousness to him, then I could oh, see Oh, I agree. It. That's what I mean. He's the only like pure evil character. He's not really evil, but I'm just saying in the shades no. of good to bad, he's yeah. the only one that really doesn't do anything. No. He gets everybody into this terrible mess. Yeah. Uh, Which I don't know why Orlando Bloom took that part. Like, you, you're coming off the Lord of the Rings. Like, why would you want to? Like, you're a badass as Legolas. Why would you take a whiny little bitch part? It just makes no sense. I don't know. Maybe show range. <laughs> I guess. I have no idea. Do Elizabeth Town instead. I, I'll believe that over this. Um, yeah, but then, it, but then you know the way it ends up, it ends up, and uh, I just wanted, I just wanted to be a little bit more. I wanted just a okay. little bit. I appreciated more. like that. It was stylized, but it wasn't to the point where it was distracting. Yeah. Like it was with, uh, what was that called? Do you see Immortals? Oh, Jesus Christ. That was super. And I liked the stylized in certain chunks, and other yep. times it just seemed way too over the top. Yeah. And I was like, well, now I'm just arbitrarily redefining the taste of this movie. Like, yeah. I think I was being unfair to the movie, but at the same time, it's like, it wasn't helping me at certain points with the story. Yeah. Although I did like aspects of it a lot. Mickey Rourke is great. But Rourke's eating peanuts. I'm like, why are you eating peanuts? It makes no fucking sense. But I kind of like it for his That's character. The thing. Yeah. I do. <laughs> he, I did like him in that. But his like helmet thing. Yeah, if, the helmet thing. If there was almost anybody else wearing that, it'd be like, what is going on? But yeah. it, it kind of worked on him. Some guys just have that ability, man. Yeah. They can do whatever and it works. It just really matters. Well, I also like the peanuts in like the subtext of maybe he knew halfway through this isn't going well. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just, just fucking checked out and the director was like, okay, I like right, it. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm this not going to get you working. to change it. Well, and I, I went back and watched Iron Man 2 the other day. His performance is not the issue with the movie. That's not the issue with the movie. The movie, the story is the issue with the movie. Okay. But his performance is good. You know, in the past, I thought it was his performance that was over the top and unnecessary. But you buy him as this character. It's sure. just the issue is this overall story of the movie. That's the problem. So just to give him a little love because Immortals, man, that was that was. Yeah, I don't fault him for. Right. No, because he did Wrestler and Wrestler got him Iron Man 2 and got him Immortals. And you're just like, Woo. Or, and then he's back to DVD now. Well, but he had Sin City before that. He's kind Sin of City. Oh. playing these these heavies, yeah. so to speak. And it it fits his current physique and demeanor and everything yep. that he's bringing. He could continue to do it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sin City would be great. I love that movie. All right. So then my number seven is The Cheat, one of my cheats. Which is uh, Disney's Hercules, the animated film. <laughs> it's your what? It's my number seven. Punt. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a punt. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah. I, 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 felt, I put that on there and I was like, if I'm being honest with myself, I haven't seen <laughs> yes. maybe another one that might come up on your list. <laughs> well, so, there's nothing wrong with that, dude. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not flawed. This is a uh, hassle, you know, yeah. happy to do the list for yeah, you, man. but this is a pocket of uh, <laughs> area that might not be my expertise. It's a fun little challenge though. I know that I had a fun enjoyment. Oh, so then my number six, then just like your number six is a punt from earlier 300. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. There's, I fucking love that movie. I love Jar Butler in that movie. I love the whole storyline with him and Lena Headey. I love the stuff with Dominic West being the, the smarmy bastard that he is. Uh, all, like the whole thing is just like an interesting st- exploration of manhood through this whole movie. You know what I'm saying? This idea that, well, being able to fight, you know, uh, equals manhood, being able to, st- even though it's against all these odds. And then these guys come down who are like these, you know, uh, craftsmen. And he has like, tw- he's like way more uh, people on his side than, than Leonidas does on his side. And he goes, I'll take my guy against eight of your guys. It won't be an issue, right? And you just see that con- the whole conversation as it goes through the whole movie. It's just very interesting to watch. And then just incredible visuals, man. The slow motion, the music, yeah. all of it. Um, this is my favorite Zack Snyder film, period. Like, period. Not even close. Yeah, right? Not even close. Yeah. Uh, it was the the thing that made me go, wow, who's this guy? Yeah. Like, oh, what's he got coming next? And I was actually kind of interested to see what you came out with, you know, the next few times. Yeah. Uh, I never saw Sucker Punch. Oof. Don't like, ever see Sucker Punch. Yeah, that's all I heard. It was like, it's it's a, I mean, it is a Sucker Punch. It's an abomination, man. Uh, but yeah, in, in 300, plus like, 
you know, how do you bring this tale to life? Yeah, good point. How, how do you make it legitimately look like 300 people could hold off Xerxes and his massive yeah. army? The god of the earth at that time. Yeah. Literally. I mean, it, numerous people were fully believing of that fact and yeah. whatnot. He was a living god walking amongst them. Yeah. If, you know, if those two people existed, you know, Leonidas, we have records of, of right. you know, these individuals, but like filling in the gaps of those stories they yeah. made for an interesting story the guy that betrays them yes could for like in any other movie because of his disfigurement mm-hmm. it would look so over the top like i don't understand him in context of like the rest of this movie yeah but the way he stylized it all it seemed like you know it was a pulp version of this story yeah where you're bringing to life the, these over the top kind of characters and how do you how do you how do you do Xerxes and, and Leonidas yeah why okay why not then have this guy that betrays be that that uh strong response from the end of like the the person watching that mm-hmm. you can see their grotesqueness the, yeah. the society their society he was an outcast yeah so he flees to the other side he wants to fight but he, they don't let him fight like it just and then the actual fight itself, we just have these two, oh, a river and a dam. Yeah. And then just the river keeps coming and the dam is trying to hold it back. It was so impressive to watch. It really was, Matt. And yeah. It, the different styles, because there's multiple battles in the movie, the different styles each battle has is mm-hmm. incredible. You know, when they're originally fighting them and then they start stacking the bodies into the walls, which is insane, and then push the bodies over and then pushing the, the people off the side of the cliff. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the, the, the storms crashing the ships. That's an awesome sequence when they're all like yelling, when the rain is pelting their shields. You're just like, you can't help but like get caught up in that and be like, like, rah, you know, like with them. And then, and then later the slow motion fights when, uh, homie's uh, son gets killed, and how he flips out, and everything he does. Yeah, and then they, and then when Fassbender fights uh, the dude on the th- on uh, who's coming over with the arm, whipping people, the larger, heavier dude, they cut his arm off, and then the final fight with Leonidas and and uh, with the trolls and all this kind of crazy shit, and he throws the fucking uh, spear and almost hits him in the, uh, almost kills him with it. It's all of it is just incredible visuals, incredible styles of fighting, and the slow motion stuff really works. Yeah, just the it's just phenomenal. And the storylines, the, the idea, like you just said, the guy who can, who wants to fight for the Spartans but can't, that ends up betraying them because he wants to be part of this thing. He tries to get Leonidas to step down. He, the, Leonidas dies more nobly than that guy does. Yeah. And then this whole thing with David Warner sending him back to uh, to Sparta to tell them the story of what happened to recruit more people to come and fight and fight off the uh, the Persians, which actually happened. It's a true story. Yeah, that's well, what's it's, insane. Exactly, it's a true story. I don't know, no, not the film itself, but you know, yeah, the story that it's based upon. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, whether or not there was three hundred and how how they could have held off, right. and who knows for how long. And- <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? There, there's all kinds of other questions on sure. top of that. I wasn't there. <laughs> Neither was I. Yeah. yeah right. So you had to take it on the accounts. I love it, though. Sometimes it's so weird. Like, uh, histories from the past. Yeah. The writer was still, like, 800 years removed from the story they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, I mean, that's still a better account than what we have, technically. <laughs> right, right. 800 years later, though. <laughs> That's that's a long time. Some of them are like you know a couple hundred years. Yeah, and those seem to be a little more trusty to me. <laughs> after it gets you know twelve generations deep. Yeah, he was like, a, hmm. Yeah, I don't know about this one. <laughs> All right, what's your uh, number five? Uh, my number five is another potential cheat. Ooh, uh, Life of Brian. <laughs> Dude. I can't help but give you that one. Go ahead. I, come Monty on. Python's The Life of Brian. It was almost, it was neck and neck with the one we punted from from earlier for the position. Okay. And I, I flip-flopped at the last second. It's the only change okay. I made to my list. No worries. Life of Brian. So it's a, it's Monty <laughs> Python. It's a, it's, I like this one. This was, this is one of my favorites. I love that you included this, man. Well, just the setup on it alone <laughs> of he, he was born near Jesus. So people flocked to him as well. <laughs> and the buildup of the story of how he's denying him at first, oh. but then he has to like, uh, oh, where is he? Like in some public arena or something, not arena, but a square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has to start extolling virtues. <laughs> Otherwise the Romans are going to get wise to him. But I love the. Like if they have a PLO and an LPO, like yeah, whatever, yeah. The li- one liberation's party and the, the the party of liberation, whatnot. 
in the the final arc of that oh. those characters when they run up and they just there's yeah technically a suicide squad but they kill themselves <laughs> in political protests it's just like the op- that's how they're most effective in this world it's so great it's so great i just love all the build ups and it's just a, it's a great um brilliant satire of religion like yeah. brilliant satire it's layers deep not just the obvious jokes they go deep into the jokes well, which they is mock- what's incredible they mock a, a bunch of different aspects yes. of that society. Yeah. It's not just taking shots at one. It's taking right. shots of all kinds of everybody. <laughs> Anybody that comes up in the story, they don't walk away looking good. Right, right. Uh, just like any Python movie. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're the hero. They still look the fool at numerous points. Is Biggest Dickus? Is that Biggest the, Dickus yes. is in this. Oh, God. That's such a great sequence. Yeah, with Pontius Pilate. And he's got that uh, that lisp. <laughs> that speech yes, impediment. Yes, speech that he can't impediment. pronounce his R's. Like, Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Of Nato if <laughs> you're like I just <laughs> I love his mom too, Terry Jones playing his mom. Yeah. <laughs> like that's like the worst Mary you could have. The worst mom version of Mary you exactly. could have. Exactly. <laughs> no Messiah's here. <laughs> He's not a Messiah. Yeah. There's a bunch of dirty clothes. There's whatever he says. <laughs> uh, and it's sword and sandal. It's set in Roman times. Yep. It's set, you know, it, it candles. It in, counts. In the midst of, of that story. It doesn't really fit uh, fit the full pebblum definition, I guess. Well, there's people walking around with swords. The Romans have swords. Yeah, so and, and they do get sandals. used. In the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the spray painting or the graffiti they're doing on the... Oh, man, all that stuff is just brilliant. Like, all around. Just a really funny movie, man. And it's one I haven't seen in a long time. I should probably watch it again. Yeah, me too. I bet it resonates even more now. Exactly. The great. little bit older, older you get, the little yeah. bit older you get. Yeah. That one has more and more power. Uh, anyway, what do you got next? <laughs> My number five is a punt from earlier, uh, Conan the Barbarian. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. What a great film. It's one I go back to all the time. I still lo- I love it to fucking pieces. I love parts of it. Oh, what? I, I, I do like it. It okay. made my best, you know, my it top did. 10 Schwarzeneggers. It did. Oh, good. It did. That's right. Yeah. It wasn't near as high as yours, and I knew that going into <laughs> yes, it, and that's did. fine. I Like, I enjoy this movie, but I think it was for... You're just a few years older than me, yeah. And I think that was the you know part of that generation it was meant for. I think so. You need to be, I think, a few years older because then it it seems to be a lot of like if I was 13 and saw that, I think I would have loved that. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, you're just like, oh my god, look at this whole world that you like got walked into, you know, through this beast of a man through Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and they, and it's really brilliant how they do the movie too, Matt, because he's an underdog through the whole fucking movie. He's an underdog yeah. constantly. This He's is in man- over his head. Yeah. This is a man of incredible size, strength, ability to fight, yet he is an underdog through the entire movie. And that's the gift is you never feel like he's on top. And because of that, you can connect to this guy. Mm-hmm. Whereas normally, if this guy was just like a killer from the beginning, you wouldn't feel as much of a connection because he's so overwhelmingly uh, able to handle his situation. But they constantly, like you said, keep putting him in over his head in everything he's doing. And it's and Schwarzenegger, you know, criticize him all you want or whatever, but like in this movie, he is figuring it out. Like he's figuring it out what works for him and what doesn't as an actor, um, for lack of a better term. And he milks it, you know? And yeah. he's believe- when he's getting beat up, he is believable. Like screaming, ah, look at all that kind of shit with the dude and the with the spike in his hand, all that shit at the beginning when he's first fighting him. And then later on, the way he like... The way he um, says the stuff he says to Crom, like it's just legitimate. Like I've been praising for you, I've been praising you for so long. Now you better step up or get the fuck out of my way. It's and I think yeah. I think they stole that from Major League when jo- when uh, what's his face uh, Serrano says that to Joe Boo. I say fuck you, Joe Boo. <laughs> if you don't okay. look for me, I, that's the two connective to me. That's the t- connective tissue between those two movies. Anyway, and great lines, just great lines. But anyway, go. I'm sorry, there are parts that don't work for you. Well, no, I mean the parts that I do like, like the the pit they go into for the giant snake. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's still pretty good, That's you cool. know, yeah. uh, effect. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it doesn't look as good as it could have today, but I, you know what? I've also seen a bunch of terrible, big CGI snakes. Yes. So I, if if you got to give me terrible, this is this is fine. This is fine. It really still works until until they can perfect that and show me something <laughs> that looks amazing. Yeah. Eh, you know, I like the idea of. It's a python, just a really massive python. It's going to, you know, coil you up, but the yeah. thing's huge. It's a dinosaur-sized snake. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> but even the effect of James Earl Jones changing oh, yeah. into the snake, yeah. it kind of works. It still works. It really does. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And the arrow thing is incredible. Turning in, the arrow turning into a snake, that's a hell of a... I don't know how they did that. I don't remember that Be- scene. Because, well, right, because James Earl Jones tries to shoot an arrow into his daughter when they've captured her. Schwarzenegger's ca- Conan's captured her as bait. Okay. And he takes a snake out. And it's a, it's a snake. It's wriggling around like a snake. And then he straightens it out and it becomes an arrow. Oh, And I'm like, how okay. the fuck did you do that? Because it's so believable. Because you see the snake wriggling Magic. around. Yeah, I guess just, so. Magic. James Earl Jones worked on a sleight of hand for a long time. <laughs> he just so. got that good. He Gosh, showed the producer. was like, I think, hey, what do, what do you think about this right there? Boom. Right. Brought Boom. it out. They don't even cut it. Like, that's what's so incredible. There's no cut in that scene so that it becomes an arrow all of a sudden, like they do with when it becomes a snake. Obviously, there's cuts through that whole process. Whereas in this, it's just like literally in one take. He's just yanking that snake out, and it stays straight as he lines it up on his bow. And I was, man, it just blew my mind. I didn't know you could do stuff like that. So I need to see this scene again. Yes, please. I don't do. remember it being this amazing that it was just, you know, gobsmacking. <laughs> but it's also a subtle. Um, a subtle jab at cults, which makes sense coming out of the 80s with everything that happened in the 70s and flower power at the end of the 60s. Okay. This whole idea of well, cults. Yeah, David, Jonestown. Right, Jonestown. All that shit, yeah. Uh, um, and Milius is the writer, so Milius has a, you know, he works at a subversive level with a lot of his scripts. So you could tell throughout this whole movie he's making a comment about um, uh, cults. You know, and it's fascinating to see. I think it's Milius who wrote it, right? Or was or did or Oliver Stone? You're wrote asking it. the wrong one. I think maybe Oliver Stone wrote it, but Milius directed it. So either way, those both guys are. Guys well, I know who, like, Stone didn't direct stuff. it, so I can help you there. <laughs> Outside of that, I don't know the answer to either of those two questions. Oliver Stone did write it with John Milius. Okay, and it's based obviously on uh, on uh, Robert E. Howard's book, but John Milius did direct it too. So yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Sure, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my four is Hercules. Boom. Disney. Nice. I like it. Uh, you know, I really love the the feats of strength as they yeah. build, but what sells the movie is James Woods. Oh, as Hades? As Hades. Yeah. That's what, like, man, I want to see more with this villain. Like, how can you bring this villain back and put him in other <laughs> stories? It's nothing against, you can do another thing with Hercules. I don't know how you do that because yeah. there's only one story that I know of right. where he had to put the trials, you know, in front of him. Mm-hmm. Uh was it Hades that did it, or was Zeus originally in the... I think it was Zeus originally to prove okay. that he was worthy. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Which correlates to what Odin does with Thor. You know, this whole, I'm going to take away the hammer and put you through the shit to see if you really earn... Yeah, but Hercules was half human. Right, right. Zeus liked to bang around hey, with the people here on Earth. When you're a god, man... Yeah, you can do what you want. Yeah. Numerous gods did it. Well, apparently, he created Wonder Woman, too, in the, uh, in the Wonder Woman mythology in the movie. That's true. He slept with Hippo, uh, Hippolyta. Hippolyta, yeah. Well, once you're on the same playing field as Mars, <laughs> it means you're also a god, which means you're related. Yeah, you're kind of related. Yeah. But yeah, this uh, film, just great stuff. It is, it is. It's, uh, it's one that um, I didn't see until, because I didn't see it in the theater at that oh, point. okay. Uh, I saw it yeah, VHS mm-hmm. or something like that after it had been out for a while. Right. Maybe with like a family member or something. I don't even know. Um. And I just happened to see it, and I was like, wow, this is really good. Why did I never see Because I've seen tons of Disney. Yeah, this yeah. is just a park pocket when it probably came out when I was like 18 or 19, and I wasn't going to go to the theater to see it. I felt that I'd grown out of that. Mm-hmm. And then, But now Disney's so good, it's like I don't mind going. I'll see anything that's good. Right. Uh, but at that time, I, who knows? My, my taste wasn't as good. I have no idea. No, could be a no number idea. of things. Uh, but seeing this, revisiting it, I... From the opening, that opening song mantra where they're bringing like the old vase to yeah. life as the women singing the songs and whatnot, yeah. and the, the old art from that time, it, they set a tone and they made choices within the design that, that worked so well over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah. It was just the right amount of Disney cartoon, but still just the right amount of Greek mythology you know, as well for me. Yeah. Uh, and it just it worked better than I ever thought it could have. <laughs> Danny DeVito's great in it. Oh, it Pan is hilarious. Uh, I can't remember the voice of the lead. He's one of those that guys. Oh, me. is he? Okay. He was on Friends for a couple stints. He like dated uh, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, Tony was... Goldwyn. There you go. Yes. He's a director, actually, as well. He was uh, in, uh, what's the one with Kerry Washington, that show that's on? I don't Scandal. Know. Scandal. He's the president in Scandal. Oh, really? Yeah, he's the main guy in Scandal who does the stuff with Kerry okay. Washington. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh no no! Hercules is Tate Donovan. I'm Tate sorry. Tate Donovan. There you Tony go. Goldwyn is in is in Tarzan. He's the voice of Tarzan. Oh, that's my bad. Okay. Yes, Tate Donovan. That, yeah, yeah, Tarzan Jennifer came at that same time. Yeah, right around the same time. Mm-hmm. 
And then I saw that years later. I was like, man, I could have missed this one. Yeah. <laughs> if I was younger, I, I could see the fun in it, but it just didn't really resonate with me. But yeah, the voice acting was really good. But once again, James Woods in the animation they chose for him. Plus, they've got what Bobcat Goldthwait and oh yeah, Bobcat. Uh, is there a second little devil? I don't or is know. Is he the only other little devil? I think he's the only other little devil. Yeah, but he's great. Yeah, For, Panic. Matt Frewer plays Panic. Okay. Yeah, which is a free, and then Rip Torn is Zeus. Uh, and oh then, yeah, he is Zeus. Right, and then you have Susan Egan as Meg, and Meg is actually one of the unsung heroes of the movie too. His whole romance with her and that whole idea of like she doesn't want to be involved, but because she's been hurt before and she's been with the bad guys, and here comes this pure dude like Hercules, who's really cool and nice, and she doesn't want to fall in love again. She has that soul, whole song about it and in the end she sacrifices for him and then he sacrifices for her which is what saves him it's fucking actually a really good movie man it is it's one of my favorites and people don't talk about it enough and they're all lost in the lion king and fucking all these other things but to me tarzan and and uh, uh, uh hercules don't get enough love for what they do in their movies it's 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 a bit frustrating to me sometimes people just default to beauty and the beast and lion king and i like Beauty and the Beast a lot. You do. Uh, Lion King. I don't I, find it as magical as other people. Yeah, no. I, I can understand if you didn't understand or you, you didn't know Hamlet before and you saw this. Oh, right. Good point. Uh, you could see it. You're like, wow. I mean, it's still excellent. I'm not taking yeah. it away, but the fact that I know that Hamlet exists and this is based on Hamlet, mm -hmm. that's going to always kind of trump it. You're living up to that. Yeah, You're yeah, living yeah. up to the bard, my yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Willie Shakes. Yeah, exactly. Did he write him or did he not? I don't know, and I don't care. This is not I don't the podcast care. for that. <laughs> yeah. Although I don't know near enough of his his work as I probably should. Oh, really? Oh, no. okay. I'm, I know uh, this or that. I'm a sycophant for his stuff, man. It's, it, this was, oh, really? He was my avenue into acting and uh, enjoyment of theater. Like, he was my avenue. Don't you find, at least I still do, mm -hmm. the verbiage at times is just impermeable. I can't. Because of the choices of analogy, metaphor, whatever right. that you're giving, I was like, I have to sit there and decipher those right. words, and you're now three lines deeper, and I'm like, I don't. Yeah, well, I'm lost at times. It's it's about studying it and understanding it, and and yeah. and, and that's not. That, I used to feel that way too, man. But when I went and studied in London in '98, I had a teacher, Selina Cadell, out of the Royal Shakespeare Company. She came and taught us all for a semester, uh, and she was incredible about it because she was just like. What you want, well, the problem with Americans is they've been conditioned to watch Shakespeare through these elevated um, prisms. This is the John Gilgood and Olivier delivering these lines and so affected and everything is up here and felt in this way. And she's like, Shakespeare didn't write for those fuckers. Shakespeare wrote for the lower classes because the groundlings, they're on the ground. So yeah. if you start to understand that his plays are like uh, barbed wire and, and, and dirt and broken glass and about the the uh, ugly parts of humanity, then you can start to decipher the stuff a lot easier because you understand how he's moving stuff around. You understand what, why he's moving stuff around. And when you start to figure out the patterns of why he's moving stuff around, then it becomes easier to understand. But I hear you, trust me, for years I was like, I would pour over the texts and be like, why can't I pick this up? Why can't I pick this up? And it would make me not want to read the, uh, his other plays because I'd be like, I don't want to feel stupid for hours, you but, know? That that being said, other times it, I had zero, like Hamlet. Yeah, oh, zero problem. It's probably the most universal one, though. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's most easily to understand. Easy to understand. Um, what is the uh, uh, much ado about nothing? Yeah, much ado is great. Yeah, uh, that one no problem. Beatrice and Benedict having their bet. Yeah, yeah. What about Henry V? Yeah, I can follow along. Okay. Um, that one doesn't get me as much as the others. Okay. What about Macbeth? Never seen it. What? Never seen it. Wow. I tried once and I was just like, I don't. Okay. I don't get it. It's an intense little film. I was young. Okay. And I haven't gone back to it. It's always been one of those things. Maybe it's not my cup of tea. Mm. I mean, when I was just in Ojai, they were, well, supposed to have been having a local production of oh. Macbeth going. But nice. because of the fire damage and all that, the oh. theater was closed down. That's a shame. Yeah. You know, you were in Ojai, like, right as Christian was in. Yeah, you guys overlapped for a day. Oh, really? Yeah. He had gone to Ojai for a family vacation starting on Friday. This past Friday to Monday. Okay. And then you went, what, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah, so you overlapped on Monday. Or probably Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, so maybe Sunday you overlapped as well. Would have been funny if you guys run into each other. What the hell? Yeah. Well, it depends on where you stayed. Yeah. It's a True. tiny town, though. It is. And a great town. 
Uh, the music in this is great, and uh, and the message as well, right? That Zero to Hero song, this whole idea mm-hmm. of like one, and once again, this is an underdog through the whole movie, even though you think he can do all these feats of strength, he's brought down, it's almost like a Samson story because of his love for Meg. Uh, you know, okay. she kind of cuts his hair. She can kind of not obviously physically cuts his hair, but in a way cuts his hair by making him weak and susceptible for Hades to trick him and do all these things he's doing. And then eventually he figures out the ultimate sacrifice yeah. and that's what saves him. So it's just anyway, good film. People give, should give him more love. Uh, what do you got for? Uh, my four is Gladiator. Oh, that's that's a punt. Yeah, OK. All right. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. All right. All right, so all right, well, we might might get ready to say the word punt. I guess on me, yeah, Ben Hur. That's your number four. That is my number three. Three. That's my number three. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. For some reason, I, I pegged you as maybe having that as one or one or two. And this is why, because to me, it's not a full sword and sandal epic, and so because it's not about a battle, it's about this man's journey through the whole thing. To yeah. try to find redemption. It's not a criticism. I'm just saying in my definition of the terms, I didn't see... It's the greatest film on the list, in my opinion, but it's not the one that I would say is the number one sword and sandal epic because there isn't really a lot of battles other than the sea battle and then the chariot race, which isn't really a battle. So. Yeah, I know what you mean, but at the same time, his life is a battle. I mean, yeah, being sure. wrongfully accused. Oh, that's deep, dude. That's deep. Uh, it is. <laughs> he went from being a, on a perch... Yeah. A Jewish prince, a Jewish prince, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and to being taken down over something as meaningless as a tile, which, which wasn't I, even him. It, it wasn't was his, him. Is his, his sister? And yeah, yeah. So all three of them, him, his mom, and his sister, yeah. all get taken in. Yeah, but he's got that weird scene early on with his slave. Who yeah, is, he's um, you know, emancipating for lack of a better term, he is? so she can go marry. Yeah, uh, but they have a thing for each other. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It seemed weird. Heston seems, you know, I buy more the homoerotic undertone than I do him. Well, Steve and I talked about it because we did a breakdown of it for Cinephiles recently for uh-huh. Easter. And um, Steve's of the belief that, because Heston has said for years there was no homoerotic yeah. thing on his side. But maybe, The other gentleman said, Stephen Boyd said fully different. homoerotic. Yeah, exactly. So maybe what happened was William Wyler, the director, told Stephen Boyd, play it as a gay love story and didn't tell Heston that. And let it play out as Heston as he's, he's just your friend, blah, blah, blah. Because there's a line he has at the beginning where he says, is there anything worse than unrequited love? Stephen Boyd says that. And so, as Masala. So maybe that was like the hint, like the subtle hint on Masala's side of his affection for, beyond yeah. just friendship, for Ben-Hur, for Judah. So Heston was every, has every right to say, it's not homoerotic to me, because he didn't no, buy no. into the thing. He's, yeah. But when you see the undertones... Oh, yeah. It's there. It's 100% there, especially mm-hmm. early on when they're doing the male bonding and then <laughs> their the final scene to, together. Yes. The, both of those really scream, this is more maybe than a friendship yeah. kind of thing. At least, you know, you may not be... Uh, this This may not be like a 90-10 thing. I think this is more like a 60-40, 55-45 type. Uh, sure. There's definitely an attraction here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Esther is the name of the slave that he... Oh, releases? Uh, releases so she can get married, but then she ends up not getting married because of stuff that went on with them, and then they get together at the end. But it's it's an incredible film. And if you haven't seen Ben-Hur, and like I've said on, we were saying on the same, like it's, it won 11 Oscars. It won Best Picture, won 11 Oscars, nominated for 14, I think, and it's an incredible film. And um, Just get over the fact that Charlton Heston, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man, <laughs> is a, a prince of Judea. <laughs> yes, true. And... <laughs> The Romans uh, look like uh, English actors. Yes, yes. Uh, by and large, uh, <laughs> I think the one, the very first, you know, quote unquote mid- Middle Eastern character you see is yeah. a white actor in in brown face. He is. He like, is. There are limitations. There yeah. are things that are going to be like, well, yeah, we wouldn't make it this way today. But he doesn't play him like an idiot, and he doesn't no, play him. Not at that's, all. That's what helps the movie and helps that portrayal. Yeah, it's not a breakfast you know? at Tiffany's. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Because if it was just racist, you're Ugh. like, that, well, that's brutal. Long duck dong and shit. Yeah. Although you could say you could make an argument the uh, when when Heston becomes the the legally adopted son of the yeah. Roman general or whatever yeah, tr- that, yeah. that gentleman is. Mm-hmm. 
the Africans dancing before that yeah. and banging on the drum, that yeah. seems a little tough to swallow. Well, like, William, William Wyler chose them. They were a French-African troupe that was dancing and performing around Europe. And so oh. he cast them to do those dances uh, for his film because he'd seen a performance. And he was like, I got to have him in my film. It makes sense within the context of Rome. It's sure, so sure, close sure. to Africa, but it's also... Part of that continent is subjugated underneath the rule right. of the Romans. So right. you come over, and it's part of our entertainment. We also do have a band. Like I didn't say, or I, I didn't think that uh, rather that it was a a choice. Right outside of it makes sense within the context of the story. Absolutely, it just does seem a little jarring when the rest of it is so tonally, you know, white guy <laughs> yes. playing a Jew, <laughs> yeah. and this and this, and you're like, well, this isn't helping. Yeah, but in no way is it. <laughs> like it seems very honest. Yeah, yeah I yeah, can yeah. definitely see that at a big Roman gala. But and, and and you never uh, walk away from the feeling that this is the spoils of victory and them destroying cultures. Because even at yeah. the beginning, when Masala shows back up and he's been named governor of Judea, and he hands that thing from Libya, yeah, that he gift, about Libya, yeah, the locket, he gives. Oh, right before we burnt it to the ground, it was glorious, and and everyone's uncomfortable in the fucking room because they get that that's about to happen to them possibly in Judea. Yeah, that's when he drives home the point that yep. like the next sentence, he realizes the awkwardness. And yes, like yeah, and then yeah. keeps going deep into it, letting them know I'm here to do a job. Yes, we are man. friends. What I love though is he treats the sister mm -hmm. like a little girl. Yeah. And she's in her mid thirties in that movie. <laughs> she does play like she's yeah, seventeen. She's wide eyed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I I looked it up and I was like, wow, she's like thirty five, thirty six mm -hmm. maybe. I wonder why this was the choice. Yeah, well, she didn't. She it ended up not working out for her as an actress, and I think she she died young. I know that. I don't know if it okay. was from depression or whatever but she died young because she couldn't quite get over that hump and she had opportunities she just couldn't quite get over that hump i think she just miscast in that one yeah you're not a 17 year old so no. why are you playing i don't know how old that sister is supposed to be but it just like i would say 17 makes about sense yeah because something like so... that where she's still naive enough she'd be amazed by a broche even though her, her brother is running you know he's a prince yeah yeah uh so she shouldn't be i, I, I don't know 17 she... makes sense anyway all right that was your what that was my three. Okay. And that was your three. My number two is yes. Spartacus. Oh, that's my number one. Okay. All right. Well, it's, let's just talk about it. A case could be made. <laughs> a case could be made. And actually, I think the way this is going to work out, you're going to end up on the final list with your number one. Mm, mm, probably. I, I, I can guarantee it. Okay. Uh, just because of the rules of the show. Work against <laughs> me this time. Smart. It's 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 awesome. I love this film, man. It's Kubrick yeah. doing a movie that you don't. If you only know Kubrick from his later aesthetic and choices, yeah. it's kind of like what? It's an anomaly film. Yeah, you're like mm -hmm. Kubrick made Spartacus. Really? <laughs> but I mean, it, I I think it's more so the probably the will and passion of Kirk Douglas. Mm -hmm. They got this thing made, mm -hmm. like the choices, a bunch of the choices within the the costuming or whatever else. Like he, he seemed yeah. to be all accounts that I've ever seen. He was very hands on. He was and pushing and telling the studios, "No, this is who we're going to have." Yeah. And he's doing rewrites on the script and going back and forth. Like he was mm -hmm. much an executive producer as he was the lead actor and everything else on this. Yeah, he, and he hired a blacklisted screenwriter at the time when you oh, didn't Trumbo. do that. Yeah, Dalton Trumbo. When you didn't do that, and um, he was very hands on. He brought in because somebody else directed the first part of the film. And he was not getting along with Kirk Douglas at all. Kirk Douglas, Douglas had worked with Kubrick on Paths of Glory before oh, yeah. this film and so he vouched for Kubrick and so Kubrick came in and he said to him this is what I need you to do do this for me and I guarantee you I'll help you in the studio whatever do whatever you want to do so Kubrick did it and there's still some you can there are certain moments where Kubrick throws in some stuff that's Kubrickian yeah. but it's really rare you got to find it you got to look for it and find it but it's there otherwise it's an just an incredibly well done epic it is it's it's Kind of soldierly at times in its mm -hmm. execution mm -hmm. of like the the framing within the scenes, the dialogue, yep. the emotions, the back and forth. It's just crisp and professional. Yes. Uh, yeah, which makes sense. That's pretty awesome, though. I didn't know Douglas was like, listen, I know you can do this. Help me out here, and yep. I will gladly help you out. We make this thing a success. Trust me, people will be knocking down your door. Yeah. And so help me make this. And that's what he did. He got him through the studio doors, and, and then he did Doctor Strangelove two years later. 
that tells you something about this guy's, uh, uh, you know, abilities. Uh, I think a lot of Kubrick stuff is uh, Peter Ustinov. Oh, not Peter. Um, Charles Lawton. All the Charles Lawton stuff where he's like the kind of put upon uh, senator making these sarcastic comments mm-hmm. that are subversive to what's going on in the in Rome and what's going on with, with the, the tribunes and everything that's happening there. I think a lot of that is where you see the Kubrick stuff, kind of his screenwriting ability and his desire to take down the uh, the um, established norm of things. You can see that playing there. and It's fun. It's so much fun. And Douglas is a powerhouse in this film, dude. Yeah, flat out. Yeah. Flat out. The, yeah. Brought to life a character... That I would never have known. Yeah. From, I think someone corrected me online. I think it's the second Servile War. Oh, okay. That this is this is a tale out of, mm-hmm. and to bring to life a story from that time. Yeah. And do it not in a way like you know Clash of the Titans or something. Make it some big mythical. Yes. Take this person you know like in Troy and spin Achilles into this. Maybe he was part God yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Where Spartacus was just like, nah, man, just one day he was Danny Glover. I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he got every, everybody else is the same thing. I'm a little yeah. too old for this shit. Yeah. Can't believe I've got to do this. <laughs> and rise up. Like what? It, it's easy to identify with because we're yeah. all sitting there watching going, it's exactly what I would do. That is the righteous thing. Yeah. Enslavement, I don't care how like normal it is in your society, yeah. is not the natural way of things. Nope. Doesn't matter who it is, man. It's fucking brutal. So, to to like, I understand the power structure of both, and I did as a kid. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to live in Roman times. Yeah. I've always been fascinated by that. But then you see the other side of it, and you're like, "But that's bullshit, guys. You can't do yeah, that yeah. over on this side. You can't have all this luxury in in those times without on the yeah, back of someone." Exactly. Uh, so I, I liked Rome. You know, when I saw it, I liked seeing Rome from a different perspective because mm-hmm. it kind of educated me onto the uh, possibility of ideas being complex on some level. Right. Like, oh, I never thought of it. Like, you think about slaves, but then what the day-to-day of that would be like. Yeah. And the the toil and how it would just drain on you physically, mentally, everything. Yeah. It, and this is a year later after Ben-Hur, I think, 1960, or even two years, 1961, I think, something like Hur's that. Hur's 59. I know yeah. that. So I, th- I think Spartacus is in 1960 or 61. So it's, it's this whole idea of the epic and, <clears throat> sorry, during that Roman times, it's, it's just prevalent at the time and they're making these movies. So it really works. And <clears throat> Tony Curtis is great. Peter Ustinov is great. Uh, uh, Lawrence Olivier is so intense. It's mm-hmm. cheese done in the right way when he is like yeah. slapping and he's just screaming, ah, when he screams and slaps uh, Douglas as Spartacus, it's, so sexual what he's doing and yet because he's jealous that this man is more man than he is with all his money all his status all his exactly. titles all the power he supposedly all has all the power he cannot get the woman that he most wants and you saw this right with people who own slaves right? and we hear this about all the time about how they uh, had sex with their Af- with their African American slaves the slaves they brought over these white plantation oh, yeah. owners had I'm sex sure that's been happening since man has been enslaving yeah. people that has been happening exactly it's this obsession to taste forbidden fruit right in their minds and she was Gene Simmons is that in the movie for Olivier uh, and yet she will not give him what he most wants because of her love for Spartacus because she respects Spartacus purity his his uh, principles right whereas uh, Olivia represents all that is that is decaying in Rome. Yeah. And will not let herself be. She was like, uh, she says, I think she says, you can have my body, but you'll never have me or something like that. And you're just like, boom, that's huge. For a guy who understands that concept, yeah. it's an incredible slap in the but face. You, by outward appearances, you'll be getting what you want, but you and I both know you'll never get what you want. Yep. <laughs> like that's, that's, that just hollows your power. Yeah. Yeah. And for all the money you can have, at the end of the day, yeah, you can't have me. You can't have that. There is no price on me. <laughs> That's right. It's yeah. so great. And so you can make people think it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And the way the film ends is great with her, like you know him, ha- what happens to him and her, like doing her moment that she has with him. Just really powerful stuff. So it's it's to me it's the purest sword and sandal because they're incredible battles with swords and they're all in sandals of course so to me it's like it fits all the criteria in the best way possible okay uh so that's why i put it as my number one okay uh so that was your number two yeah what's your two so my two is seven samurai which is my cheat that's where i couldn't i was like you know what 
This is supposed to be kind of Roman to me. Otherwise, <laughs> that plus Yojimbo probably would have made my Oh, list. Yojimbo. I had to leave Yojimbo off because I'm like, I can't cheat twice with the same Trust kind of me, vibe. Trust me, if I was going to allow myself to cheat like that, yeah. they were both making the list. That yeah. was the problem. It's just like, if I'm going to do it, then I'm going to do both because I really enjoy the living shit out of both of those. That's fair. And technically, they're all wearing sandals. They are, and, and they're using like swords. Tons of sword play. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to, but I want to stick to the peblum. Yeah. If you're talking, I understand that to me means that, you know X. <laughs> well, like I said, I yeah. had a couple cheats. It would have um, been in, probably my number three then. Yeah, if fair. It had made my list probably fair, fair. Well, the fact you put Hercules on my on your list helps me like feel like I only cheated once, which is Seven Samurai. That was my cheat. So, oh, Hercules is sort and sandal. <laughs> Just because it's, it's animated, animated doesn't mean it's not telling that same type of tale. True. Does it does it more successfully than any other Hercules movie I've ever seen? I would absolutely a thousand percent agree I've with I've never you. seen a good one until that one and I've but, never seen one since. Oh God. That rock one was terrible. And I love the rock. That one was terrible. Yeah, but my love for Ian McShane, man, I saw that thing. <laughs> That literally is what drew me in. Ian McShane's in it. I'll watch. I'll go see it. Yep. I'll get it. Guy's my favorite. Ugh. Um, anyway, Seven Samurai, I don't want to spend too much time on it because it is a cheat, but if you haven't seen this film, it's Kurosawa's greatest film. It's my. It's in my top five greatest films ever made, period. Uh, you know, it's if you've seen Magnificent Seven, it is essentially... Um, Magnificent Seven is an abridged version of Seven Samurai because Seven Samurai came before Magnificent Seven. It's these seven samurais that are recruited to protect this small town of farmers against these marauding samurai who have been abusing these farmers, taking their money, taking their food, and just uh, and I think raping their women and doing whatever they want to do. And these farmers are so poor, they try to recruit these samurai. These samurai and at the time are in bad conditions or they're friends with the other samurai so they all band together to try to fight. Toshiro Mufuni becomes a star out of this film and uh, it's just an incredible film if you haven't watched it. it. Even if you're not into samurai stuff, it's irrelevant. It's about the story and these characters and, and what they go through and who lives and who dies which is really yeah. intense. Yeah, It's the template for the band of unlikely heroes ganging up right. that we still have to this day. Suicide Squad is essentially a, a seven samurai. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's numerous. Anytime we're just a bunch of guys kind of like collectively get together and fight an injustice, yeah. you can thank this movie. As far as I, I don't believe there's a precursor to this where there's another one of those. Not that I can think of, man. Well, yeah, just a random band of individuals come together. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's an awesome movie. I, I'm, not gonna fall, I'm not going <laughs> to talk shit about it. I love that movie. I love that you enjoyed it, man. Uh yeah, I just I, right. I wanted Peblum esque. Yeah, and I respect stuff. I respect. That. I had to cheat a little. All right, so my one, one is Gladiator. Oh, okay. Boom. Just for it beats Spartacus to me just because of rewatchability. I know That's I fair. will probably see this more times than I will Spartacus by the end of my life. Okay. Uh, so on that level, then to me, Gladiator is the as soon as as soon totally as this list came up, I was like, okay, well, Gladiator. I literally went Gladiator, Spartacus, Ben Hur, and those were my one, two, three. Yeah. Just the first three, I was like, that's no, okay, bing, bing. And then yeah. after that, I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> type of thing. What about this? We weren't sure about this topic. We were texting back and forth, I remember. And then within five minutes, you're like, nope, I got the 10. I'm good. Oh, no, no, no. You texted first. Did I? You said, I oh. got to 12. Yeah, I did and get I'm to like, 12. All right, let me get back to you because I was in the middle of something. Yeah. Give me some time to think because I don't have time to think right now. Oh, right on. Okay. And I, I, I think I got to like seven. And I was like, I think I could squeeze this out. Sure, let's yeah. do this. But I mean, Gladiator, what are you going to say? It's a great I, choice. Best picture. Yeah. It is. Russell Crowe's real announcement to the international world. Yes. Like, he had been around. I'm not yeah. saying that, you know, sure. that he hadn't, but this was the announcement of, no, this guy's a powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, he's great, even though I think The Insider came out before this. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love the, you know, living shit out of it. A lot Insider. of people thought he should have won for that. I think he should have won for that. Yeah. In that year. I can't remember, because that came up, I believe, on our list when mm -hmm. we did with Gray yeah. of, you know, who did, who should have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I need to see it again since you brought up the is he dead or not? And is this all yeah, man. his brain's last dying gasp? Is this altruistic kind of ending? I need to watch it through that prism. I haven't seen it since then because it, it has intrigued me and I've almost watched it. Oh, yeah? Uh, a couple yeah. times, but like I, I, something else came up. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I need to watch this instead or I need to catch up or I really haven't seen this. Yeah. Uh, I know I'll eventually and I'll remember that. It's, it's good. It's an it's a incredibly uh, enjoyable film. For what it's tackling at the time it came out in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. This idea that you could still do a Roman epic film like this. How can you not? And have it resonate. Yeah. You know, with what you're dealing with and concoct this villain and, and his sister and the whole thing with Connie Nielsen and the whole thing with what happens to him. Once again, this is a powerful man who is leading rebellion. This is, seems to be the template of a lot of these 
uh, uh, Peplum Films this idea of a powerful person who is put under and then they have to spend the rest of the film as an underdog trying to fight against the system to get revenge and get back on top right and Spartacus is different because well maybe yes and no because he was a gladiator so he could have become like gladiator could have become like a revered person in the society but eventually he realized what this whole life was going to lead to and so he had his rebellion in that yeah. way and uh, you know obviously the only rebellion that uh, Russell Crowe was legitimately interested in was revengeance against the emperor but he also wanted to bring back what Richard Harris had wanted to do at the beginning of the film with Rome. And yeah. So he fought that fight too. Turn it into, you know, return it to the Republic that yeah. it was before as opposed right. to the, you know. The uh, dictatorship that it is, yeah. Yeah. The, the one that's not monarchy. God, I can't believe I'm blanking. He's an emperor and that would make it a... Bleh. <laughs> an empire? I don't yes, know. an empire, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's just ridiculous. My brain is scrambled well, right now. Um. I, I love the opening scene where they're fighting. I'm assuming I think it's the Gauls. Yeah, up in Germany somewhere, and just the opening. It feels so gritty and real. Yeah. It's dark. Like the the color palette is just gray. Mm-hmm. Everything is gray. The whole world, even the t- tiny sparks of color they have on their uniform, and whatnot. Yeah, have they, they feel almost grayed out? Not like fully, but there seems to be like a, a filter over them. Yeah, just the grime of this world has encaked them. <laughs> And that's on some level, that's the truest aspect of the Roman Empire because they needed to keep conquering lands to get the spoils, to feed this luxurious lifestyle yeah. and this ridiculousness going back on that eventually toppled them. Yeah. You, can't, you can't have all these armies and this massive border. It's just, it'll bankrupt you. Exactly. Uh, but to see that, the squalor of like how the, this society had to keep pushing its way outward and outward and outward. Yeah. And then the return to the opulence. Like... The, the greatest juxtaposition of that is when um, Joaquin shows up mm-hmm. and he's on that horse and he comes to run in to congratulate uh, Richard Harris on the battle. Yeah. And he's like, you really need to be thanking him. Like, I didn't do anything. And he runs, oh, brother. <laughs> just, uh, it's, you can see right through it. Of course. It was a, the, you know, the first, I think, one of the first glimpses of, of Phoenix going, man, this guy's good. Yeah. Just he brings so much to every part he does. Yeah, and he purposely shows up late to that battle. So he yeah. can claim so, like he was gone yeah, he his evades way. evades all the actual. Yeah. He's like, I rushed here. No one believes you right now. Yeah. No one believes you. We all know no. you're full of shit. <laughs> you could have been like, it's not like these battles. There isn't. Eh, it depends. Yeah. Like if you ever uh, uh, read some of Caesar's uh, correspondence back and the battles oh. that they had to go through, like when he was on his campaign because he stayed out longer than he should have. Yeah. So eventually kind of hired a PR person. He would write his own. Uh, story sitting back, but he purposely wrote these kind of like, and then we were attacked from the side, and it made for good public literature. Wow! So it built up his reputation with amongst the people, made yeah. him even more loved there. This almost like cult like figure. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how usually you would think that he's just like, oh, we came out victorious, but he wrote about like his you know semi defeats and whatnot. Yeah. Made these things seem like oh, we came so close to being they they beat us back, but we came back eventually. <laughs> like in the next one. Uh, Great stories, guy. Yeah. Great story. You look great. Exactly. But yeah, <laughs> usually, like, a buildup of a war that size or a battle that size, yeah. like, there would be a little time. Yeah. You would know that beforehand more than likely. Yeah, exactly. Unless it's happening, you know, nonstop and all. <laughs> I think what you said is a great point about Phoenix. Um, his villain could easily have devolved to mustache twirling like Billy Zane. Easy. Billy Zane does in Titanic. That kind of, like, yeah. easy, superficial... Villains, but his uh, scenes with Connie and when he has Connie's boy uh, and what he does with it are just just threatening him. Yeah, without just threatening, without threatening him, and Uh he he has this like mania because he is this kind of spoiled child who thinks an he's an entitled spoiled child who thinks he should be got he should he deserves these things. Yeah, if you listen to the commentary, Ridley Scott thinks that. Joaquin Phoenix has all the right in the world that that character uh, is just uh, is the product of being unloved by his father and therefore should be sympathetic through the whole movie. And yet no one fucking feels sympathy for Joaquin Phoenix in that whole fucking movie. Well, I think it also comes down to um, our understanding of hereditary right now. Right. Where before, sure. Sure. My son takes over, and this is a monarchy, yep. and we're just going to keep passing this on. And Harris had reservations about that because he wanted to return the power to the people. Exactly. And Joaquin can see that 
you know, slipping through his grasp. Yes. And just something he thought was his birthright is now drifting away. And his yeah. mania makes even more sense to me because he's trying to desperately hold on yeah. to this power that he knows could be taken away. Right. But he can't relay that to people. He mm-hmm. can't allow them because that, that's what happens with power. Yep. Once you feel you don't have it anymore. Well, guess what? You don't have it anymore. Yep. It's illusion on some level. Mm-hmm. Just everybody believes you have it. So guess what? Then you have it. Yep. Uh, but it's also a final insult, right? You were never around. You didn't raise me. You went around in these campaigns. You were becoming this emperor, all this stuff that you're doing. And in the long run, though, you didn't... Know, hold on. I don't know who the hell that is. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody's somebody's knocking with your voices outside all, yeah, all of a sudden. Hold, let me take a look here. Uh, here we go. It's a big reveal. Is this going to be another package delivery? That's a that's an old school instead of my house, yeah. it's yours. Is it? It is a package delivery. Wow. How the tables have turned. You know, those on Patreon, one, one day you will get to that, uh, that show, but now the tables have turned. <laughs> well, here's what I'll tell you, Matt. This is actually, a, I'm very happy I answered the door. Um, last week, my uh, noise-canceling earphones, my Bose noise-canceling earphones, the left earphones started to malfunction a little bit. Now, I was past, past my year-long warranty on it mm-hmm. so i called them and said what can we do here and like well normally it's like 277 dollars to and i was like what no I can't, i'm not gonna pay 277 and like but because you have bought a couple of other products from us blah, blah blah we have your name on file here on record um we're gonna send you a replacement set and we're gonna send you the newest model of the replacement set and i was like thank well, you very much well smart by them because now they just built a lifelong customer they really did Yep. I will always buy Bose earphones way yep. over the Beats bullshit. I can't even with Beats uh, and shit. The audio quality on those is terrible. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited that they came. I will probably spend the next two hours after we finish our podcast just listening to my music in total utter bliss. So Just sweating as you <laughs> power cycle. <laughs> yeah, power cycle. Staring out the door. <laughs> um, where were we? Anyway, where were we? Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, Phoenix. Um, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. The work he does through the whole film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and do you think he sleeps with he has slept with his sister before? Yes. Okay. All right. There was a, there was doubt in your mind. Well, there, Steve brought up Steve when we were discussing it for uh, Cinephiles. He mentioned he's like, I don't think he ever did, but I think it was something he always wanted to do. Not or because, he tricked her into it. Yeah, he, tricked. Yeah. Sure, but she she interacts with it like she has shame. Yes, as if it's transpired already. That's right. the way I always read it. Right. Where. Maybe it happened a couple of times, and I wish that it happened now because I look back and, mm-hmm. and I don't like myself for that choice. Yeah. And now he is just over there lusting in the corner. Yeah. Just makes him even more disgusting a character. Yeah, and in a way she uh, – and also for her, she feels a bit of blame as well. Like I, in some small way, by allowing him to have me, I created him to a degree, this privilege, this entitlement. I contributed to a small – degree to this entitlement and it's a, and the film is fascinating in that it's 18 years ago but still it deals with the idea of a patriarchal society it's very 18 evident years ago yeah brother 18 years ago man <laughs> like i know it was but yeah. at the same time wow that was 18 Dude, years f- ago f- fuck that Just man say it like that you're like jesus sometimes when i look at lebron i go jesus christ how the fuck are we towards the tail end of his career already in my mind it's insane hey he's got Five years left on a minimum. Nah, nah. Yeah. Three. Tops. Tops. That body's going to shatter at some point. He'll play till he's 38. You think he's like Paul Pierce? He'll just play. To, he'll just go from team to team. He's already Utility improved player. his outside shot. Yeah. And as long as he keeps doing that, he can't bang forever, although he's still going at it. But if you listen to his, his uh, Rich Paul, he puts yeah. $1.5 million into upkeeping his body over the course of a year. What? Just with chefs and hyperbaric wow. chambers or whatever or cryotherapy or who yeah. knows what he's doing he spends 1.5 million dollars a year on Holy that shit. on his nutrition on everything just keeping him in tip-top shape wow yeah well it'd be worth it right cryotherapy man i want to try that one time i've heard <laughs> about that shit so have i it doesn't sound i don't understand the positive health <laughs> effect that it could give i just want to see stepping into a negative <laughs> whatever degree it is it's absolute Kelvin, and you die in two seconds. Oh, to the shock shocks your body's immune response, and yeah, I don't understand what it's supposed to be like. You, I think Max is supposed to stay in there is three minutes. It's yeah. like negative hundred or something, hundred fifty yeah. or 
or I don't know, but I know it's a negative something in Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I just don't know. If you can make it three minutes or something, like that's the high end of the spectrum. Yeah. Most people the first time go like a minute to a minute and a half. Oh, really? That's somewhat, Ooh, that's something good, like that. It's a good challenge. But all the stuff they, they, may, they say it's good for mm-hmm. just seems like snake oil salesmen from 200 years ago. It's I don't like, know if these great athletes are using it. Yeah, yeah, because they're willing to try anything. But true. They are. Absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. If you're running that much or play, you know, playing football here in the States. Yeah. They say that's a car accident your body goes through every week. Yeah, when yeah. you're playing, yeah. yeah. I'll try cryotherapy. I'll try this. I'll <laughs> anything. Try anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If, exactly. <laughs> even if it has a placebo effect, it's totally worth it. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's our lists separately of the top 10 sword and sandal epics. And, of course, as you know, every week we now compile the list. Um, who is writing this time, Matt? You or me? Um, Do you remember? No. Okay. Do you want to write or not? Uh, I will happily bang. How about that? All right. So you had Spartacus at one. I had that at two. Yeah. So that is the highest. All right. I'm happy to give you Gladiator at two because I have it at four. Unless where would we have Ben Hur? Because I have it at three. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. We put Ben Hur at three. Sure. I have, uh, well, are we going to do the common ones first? What do you have next? Seven Samurai. Uh, but I have Conan the Barbarian at five. But I had Seven Samurai at two. Where did you have Hercules? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's four, seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, samurai was where again? Two. Two, zero. <laughs> and then Conan was nine, five? Nine, five. Two, seven seems, or I mean, four, uh, seven, four, seven higher. seems more logical. Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to do that, then Conan, then Seven Samurai? Sure. Okay. Only for, because of the technical nature of it all. And I'm happy to, obviously Seven Samurai is a great film. I don't mind moving it down the list for this one, though. Moving it down the list for this one. Uh, Can I have Life of Brian next? Absolutely. I love that you put that on the list, dude. And then what, 300? Uh, Yeah, what do you have that at? Six. I've got that at eight. Where do you have Troy? You have that lower. At ten. I ten? Okay. Ten. Yep, 300. Okay. Then well, Troy. it looks like the last three are taken care of. Oh, yeah? On some level. Um, Troy's after that, right? Yeah, probably Troy. And then where do you have Jason and the Argonauts? Oh, that was my number eight. Because you have Clash at nine. I have a different Clash at but ten. I, have, clash, I yeah. have Jason at seven. So let's do Jason and the Argonauts at ten. Boom. That's yeah. our list. Nice. Look how easy that was. That was super easy. There we go. Matthew Hassel. You've helped us do it. Easiest list maybe we've ever done on the top 10 show. There was, uh, have you ever seen the, the, what is it, the fall of the Roman Empire? I've never seen that. Yes, I saw that. Okay. It's intense, but it's also, some of these are kind of cheese ball at times that take you out of it. A lot of them are cheese ball. That's what bothers me. They can be a little too cheese ball and, and I want them to be a little more like realistic in their approach. And they don't quite get there. So it's always frustrating. When a bunch me. of them are like, hey, it's three hours and 27 minutes. Yeah. Like, why? I can't. <laughs> ben Hur could easily, you could cut. You could cut certain certain chunks. I don't know what you're talking about. Of the opening of him brooding throughout like the beginning. I don't, there's, there's, you could probably cut 10, 15 minutes out of that stuff. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Yeah, yeah. It's Jesus Christ. Don't be cutting Jesus Christ, man. Well, I'm not, I'm talking about <laughs> Ben Hur's. Storyline, not not Jesus Christ, not the Christ of Jesus. No. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right, well let's uh, let's do this. Let's count this down. The top ten sword and sandal epics. All oh, right, was it epics? It's, oh, sorry. <clears throat> That's fine. You don't have to. The top ten sword and sandal movies. There we go. At number ten, Jason and the Argonauts. At number nine, Troy. At number eight. 300. At number seven. Life of Brian. At number six. Seven Samurai. At number five. Conan the Barbarian. Numero quattro. Hercules. Number three. Ben-Hur. Number two. This is Gladiator. And the number one sword and sandal movie is... Spartacus. (laughs) Spartacus. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. That's my Tony Curtis. That's the best Tony Curtis I have. I'm Spartacus. That's not bad, is it? Come on. I, I, 
Sure. <laughs> I don't know many people that do Tony Curtis anymore, so you could be one of the best. Back when I used to watch old stand-ups, there was a guy who used to do a great Tony Curtis. Exactly. That's an impression for genera- <laughs> our parents' generation. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I do what I can. I do what I can. <clears throat> anyway, all right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. That was our Top 10 Sword and Sandal uh, Movies uh, episode. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Matthew Hasso, for suggesting that topic. I'm glad we got to it. Like we said at the beginning, glad we got to one of your topics. Um, Thanks to everybody who's donating on the Patreon. It's really incredible. And the fact we keep growing every month is even more incredible. And all of you who've donated, like Matt said at the beginning of the uh, the podcast, we are definitely going to try to do one uh, subject a month. uh, Or select one of your topics a month from all of you who are donating there. And we're not going to repeat... Until we get everybody who's donated, uh, so it's not too late. You can go up there if you go to the level that I think it's fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. You donate, you can choose a topic that we talk about, and as you can see, we get we dedicate the time to it, and we have a lot of fun do talking you, your topics. Do you have his list? Oh, Matthew's list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me take a look. Why don't we? Why don't you vamp while I take a look? Not a problem. I just didn't want to. That's that's part of the yes uh, experience. Is You're right. Hearing his, seeing right. seeing what maybe perhaps we uh, missed out on, uh, making fun of him if we don't agree with the placement of certain movies. Or the fact that some were included. Although, uh, you know, he could take us to task on Seven Samurai, I think, if he wanted to. Oh, come on. Uh, it, you know, we're talking about, you know, it's a very specific definition, is all I'm saying. Yeah, please. Uh, thank God you picked up the mic for that. Way to defend yourself as I just sit here and watch you type away. Clickety-clackety. Clickety-clackety. Clickety-clack. Uh, all right. Uh, here it is. Oh, he, Matthew never sent one in. Son of a gun. Did you ask him for yes, it? Yes, of course. He knows the drill. Son of a gun, Matthew. Wow, we're recording this late, too. We are. This is usually later in the week than we normally do. You know what I may do? I may reach out to Matthew, and I'll add it as an addendum. Is that is that sure. good with you? Sure. I just, yeah. You give him some love? Uh, yeah, I, can't, I can't meet up with you before, so you have to read it solo. Throw yeah. it in there. <laughs> and here's Matthew's list. Maybe I'll call you, and I'll record your reaction to the list. Now, just do your impression of me. Just <laughs> I don't have an impression of rifle you. Rifle in some bad jokes. And, oh, that's terrible. Why'd you have that on your list? I don't know why I sound like a knockoff, like Miley Cyrus's cousin on Hannah Montana or something. Hey, look, oh, come on, guys. Uh, and I've only seen bits and pieces of that show. It's not like I even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, what, are you messaging him right I am, now? I'm legitimately messaging him to see if he's on. Online right now? Yeah. Really? We're going to vamp? So then he can, do you think he has it done? Because if he's got to go, hurry up, ah, oh, shit, I got to make it. I don't want to sit here and wait for 10, 15 minutes and people listen to us just ramble on. People love listening to us. It's the whole point yeah, of the show. Yeah, that's true, but I got shit to do. <laughs> so it's just sitting around for 15 extra minutes. I don't know if I got 15 minutes today, man. He literally needs to be like, if you can hit send, if you can click send within 30 seconds, we'll do this. But I, I'm pretty sure the show's over. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. We're never going to get this. I think it's great technology. Yeah, I don't know about that. Come on. Have some faith. Uh, uh, well, let's vamp for a little bit. How about you tell people where they... What, like? I, seriously, uh, man, I don't have Patreon. time. I don't have the <laughs> okay, time. I'm that busy. Time. Fine, fine. Uh, if you want to donate to the Patreon, as we mentioned, uh, www.patreon.com backslash uh, the top 10, number 10, I think, yeah? And yeah. then you can uh, see the tiers that we have there and donate there. Um if you and of course you don't have to, we are not like you know forcing anybody to do anything like that. So we really appreciate everyone who's donated, and you can see all the different ways that you can. And we've got things in motion. We got a special guest coming on next week, which I'm looking forward to. Right? Yep. Uh, which uh, was he was really great to take some time out of his busy schedule to come on the show and record an episode with us. So look forward to that next week. Uh, I can't wait till we announce it. Do um, you want to tell them where you can find us on uh, Facebook? Just get your Thunderdome votes in by oh, yeah. uh, today once you're hearing this at 5 p.m. Um, good luck uh, there. I haven't told John the movies yet. so Oh, you haven't? I, I wrote them down. Is Walter it, Matthau correct? It's Matthau. It is uh, Charade versus... What? Yeah. Um, Charade? Charade versus... God, I am literally blanking. I'll have to look up the. Is other it one. Bad News Bears? No, no, no. God damn it! No, it's another off, like another unexpected choice. I, I thought Bad News might be in it, or maybe Grumpy Old Men. Neither Grumpy Old Men. Are. It's uh, shit. Is it JFK? I'll, I'll tell you once we're done recording. <laughs> oh, fuck it! I just I didn't even think about it. I was like, ah, you'll see it on Monday. 
kind of thing. Okay, Matthew just responded with a picture of himself holding his newborn baby. Apparently, he's in the hospital with his newborn baby. You have his phone number? Look. (laughs) He just responded with a picture. Holy shit. Congratulations, Matthew. I didn't know he had his phone number. Yeah, well, no, no. It's a DM on Twitter. Oh. On Twitter, so. Wow. He said, give me a second, please. I'm dealing with the newest member of the Outlaw Nation and the Top Ten Show. Well, first off, Top Ten Show should be listed first. I'm sorry. (laughs) That's first thing first. Your baby needs to learn that. (laughs) Baby needs to learn that. Uh, That's fair. I absolutely agree with that. Well, we're on that show, this show right now. We have more downloads on this show than Outlaw Nation. I respect that. If we were doing Outlaw Nation right now (laughs) and we were recording that, Outlaw Nation should come first. Fair enough. Fair enough. This is cool. Congratulations to Matthew Hasso. Is it a boy or a girl? Oh, I don't know. Or can we say? Uh, uh, yeah. Let me ask him. This is great. I love technology. Do they have a name? You know, uh, do you want us oh, to reveal the sex of your child? Is that how you say it? Yeah. I don't, can I don't... we give this baby a shout out on air? What's this kid's name? Yeah. That's what I want to know. This All is right. great. I love technology. All right. I can vamp for this. <laughs> Go the ahead. fact that he interacted this quickly, yeah. yeah. I just thought it was like, oh, what are the chances, man? What's he going to see, a random email? Yeah, people, then... people, have their, people have their DMs turned on on Twitter, man. They do. Uh, but at the same time, it's like the, the likelihood of catching somebody at that exact moment when they happen to be looking down at their phone. Yeah. Because I need... Especially in the hospital. Yeah. Well, that's where we could fall into a trap right now. He responded, and it was like, oh, I, I have to text family. Yeah. Got yeah. <laughs> people here like he should be busy as opposed to hold on guys let me get you my list real quick because that's the most important thing in my world <laughs> i think we should cut him some slack you know what? <laughs> i don't have time to vamp for that because i don't blame him what no of course not but he's not doing that is he actually typing back right yes, now yes he's typing back tell him to spend time with his baby yeah, then will you let him do what he wants to do with his life he's a grown adult well now i'm judging him for actually spending time with us instead of that, that precious we bring child. him so much joy that precious child I, i'm pretty sure the, the, the kid already <laughs> has given him more joy than we ever could don't say that that's not true. Really? You're putting us over his newborn child? We don't know what the newborn child's going to do. We could, we've could. we already... <laughs> so you're, you're forecasting Hitler, is what <laughs> no, you're saying. I didn't say that. Why are you going to an extreme? You know, you, well, it's, it's just because you just said, we don't know what that child's going to do. Well, there's only a few unforgivable sins in human history. <laughs> he would be one. You know, Stalin? Who's, uh, who's next? Uh, Pol Pot? Pol Pot? Idi- exactly. Idi- exactly. <laughs> There are choices. All the choices are terrible. I'm just saying that we've already invested, given him three years of joy. Uh, uh, this child just got here. I'm telling you, that child's already given him Come more on. joy. More uh, joy. I think you're over overstating it. <laughs> I, think we're I, I think because we don't we've have children, it. we don't understand. Uh, you're I, probably right. I feel a crazy way about my nephew and um, nephews and niece, nieces rather. Um, it's like I, there's a there's a a joy there and a love there that doesn't exist in other places. I can only imagine if they were my kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how much greater that would be? Of course, it'd be instant. Man, you have a newborn? Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? A newborn baby versus us? I, I I've known you for years. Yeah. I choose I choose that newborn baby. Well, well, of course, that's different. How is that different? That's because, his child. Uh, I, I, I guess I guess you're right. Wait, who's newborn baby? Your newborn baby? You any any newborn baby over me? Yes, that's fucked up. That's, that's not, fucked that's not, up. You have no idea what that newborn baby is going to do. <laughs> once again, once it's going to kill people. Why do you, are you walking around hospitals just doing that, Hitler? <laughs> Me, not quite on this one. Are you, we should make you a post, like some medieval person, and you just sit at the hospital and deem whether or not the baby. It's like Sparta. It's like three hundred. If you don't like the baby, it gets thrown outside the oh, town limits. Good oh, luck to you. It's terrible. It's terrible, man. I wouldn't do it. I'm just saying. This is what happens in Rokanopolis. <laughs> Uh, okay, her name is Rosalind Sabrina Hassel, born April 7th, 4 a.m. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Rosalind, Rosalind Sabrina Hassel. There we go. Another Latina in the world, son. Yes. I'm going to take over the world. 4 a.m.? Oh, see, he's had time to talk to everybody about the birth of the child. We're bringing him joy now by talking about it on the show. Okay. This is above and beyond All what right, you get Seinfeld. on this tier. Hey, baby. Um, this saying. is well. His baby just got a shout out. Hey, Matthew, you need to slip us an extra five bucks next month for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that baby, no, well, I'm the criminal here. That baby doesn't know what he just got. <laughs> got no problem doing it. But that baby, that baby needs to, you know. You know what? I take it back. It's a, it's a female child. I take it all back. 
She has already given him more joy than we gave in three years. A male child, Quits. it's always, uh, you never know. Could Still be, not discrediting my Hitler idea from earlier. No, I'm because, just saying it could be wiping boogers on the wall. But a female child, I think, is already has a better uh, shot at things. So I, I give it more love, a female child. And now our female listeners are going, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, I don't know if we're going to get his list, to be honest with you. But That's I think fine. giving him a shout-out for his child, I think, Ask can him take for his the list. place. Please, if you have the time, please put it in if I, you can. Yeah, okay. You already said you would, but yeah. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a good list. And thank you, Matthew. Like The, the people that support us on Patreon, you guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, and we want to thank you. We hope you're enjoying the uh, the old classics. The next one comes out uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So enjoy that. You can get that on the Patreon feed. For those, uh, we did run into one person that said, they donated, but they couldn't get them. That's because they donated after the first. Right. So you had to be – that's why we tried to give you the heads up, although it was only like a week and a half out before the end of the month. Um, but you had to have the money. And so basically if you've donated 10 on May 1st, you'll have access to it. But then you can go back and listen to those other four that you have missed or how many other Wednesdays there are this month. Yes. I think there's four. How uh, come I don't have access to them? Like I tried to listen to it. and Do I have to log in to listen to it? How do I get access to yeah, it? Yeah, you got to log in. Some bullshit, man. It should just come to me. Why? <laughs> It's on the show's email account under it? that, so unless you're bouncing those emails and stuff. Top 10 car chase movies. Oh, here it is. Oh, I can't wait to listen. To that. I'm going to go down memory lane and my new earphones Enjoy. and listening to this uh, podcast. Enjoy. I can't um, imagine uh, what we talked about. I don't have the slightest clue at all. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell them where to find you? Uh, sure. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, at Matt Nost, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T. Or Great. you can f- uh, join us with on the discussion on Facebook.com yeah. forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. A lot of people have been doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. Thanks so much for listening to us here this week on the top 10 show. Um, Matthew, I will probably add your list at the end. We'll just do a verbal list where I count it down uh, to the end of the show. So maybe your list is coming up next if we get it in time. If not... Pay attention to us next week. We've got a new episode coming. Like I said, a very special guest. So thanks, everybody, for, for listening this week, and we will talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.